<laughs> Yo, I, this morning I was all stoned watching the fucking FTX fucking hearings and shit. <laughs> shit. That shit had me rolling. Why are all these old ass people like in charge? <laughs> Yo, I watched some of it. It was crazy. They were like, well, you know that Sam Bankman Freed did the deed and sent the money. <laughs> it's amazing. That shit was wild. Yo, it's crazy. <laughs> Everybody's before he could uh, testify, and uh, maybe some conspiracy theories, maybe some different things that they you saw that they mentioned that during that hearing today. They're like, "Why did you take him out before he?" Yeah, could I did. Yeah, they're gonna take him out another way. That's why. They ain't I taking mean, him out to dinner. <laughs> yeah. you, did you see the video? Did you see the video of him walking out in uh, handcuffs? No, I didn't see that. Yo, he looked. I shook. saw it. He looked shook. Yeah, he knows he's gonna get whacked. Fuck it. Uh, let me play this shit real quick, and then we'll get deep into it because we got another. T- TikTok video going viral nudes and it has to do with the hearing today. I got the best part of it. I threw it out there. But oh yeah. Music Abby. to the jail and eat the grub, Sam Bankman. Oh, yeah. Fuck it. Yeah, Maxine was tripping today. Did you guys see that? At the end, she was trying to end it. And the other yeah, was like, yo. <laughs> that dude, she's going wild. And there is one dude where she's like, all right, now you can speak. Now you can speak. Yes, sir. There you go. And I was like, man, she is laying down some spice. Vice right now. 
Yo, I felt like my family was just arguing in the living room or something. He's like, oh, please, can I? And she's like, yes, you may, sir. They're all trying to have the last word and shit. I was like, yeah. yo, these, these are our representatives and shit. This is their level of fucking uh, emotional intelligence. Like, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah, dude, it's the real deal. And those people are at the top of the food chain when it comes to power regulation in the future of all these different kind of financial institutions and technological innovations kind of thing. It's fucking wild. It's crazy shit. And uh, yeah, definitely, definitely a shit show to see. Oh, we got Big Joe the John joining us. Blue check mark. We got we got blue check marks in the minority right now. I know. Yo, what up? Um, I don't know who the fuck is hosting. But fuck that guy. Fucking, I'm the real host around. Yeah, the- someone. It's uh, it's this dude Willie. He's out hunting right now, so he just plugged in his phone. And he's just chilling. You know how we do. I I broke Willie's heart. I broke Willie's heart. Um, what was it two nights Did ago? Poker. Yeah, cause he won this big old tournament, right? Um, he's a big old tournament, like a hundred plus people. He was flying high, you know, but I had to humble him real quick because he was talking too much shit. He's like, I still got your junkie too. Like, Man, you just gonna keep clowning me? Put the junkie on the line then. You know what I mean? A hundred eight right now, one on one. And then Shaw Dog tried to get involved. He was all drunk. He didn't know what the fuck was going on. So I like that, you know, because I was like, oh, I'm gonna beat this fool. He's gonna go all, all in with a pair of twos. So um, I was like, yeah, Shaw Dog, come on in. So you could be part of it too. And I could fucking want to aid a ninja and, and my junkie's back. And fucking Willie Boy was like, oh, man. I did him dirty too. I was fucking, I'm fucking uh, checking with like a full house off the flop and shit. And then he's trying to punk me and like, like yo, I'm a fucking get it. He tried to scare me. And I'm, I fucking went all in. Like, man, I ain't scared of you. What the fuck? He fucking ran into a full house, and he was like, oh, you fucker, well played. I'm like, well, you keep fucking with me about the junkie, I want it back, you know? Um, Yeah, but the, the fucking FTX. Yo, what's, the, what's the biggest? The biggest what? No? Yo, hold on, real quick, what's the biggest NFT that someone put the biggest NFT that somebody put on the line in the poker in the poker war so far? This this virtual virtual land that I just sold this morning for like three hundred something ADA. Uh from and that that was in the even everything. That was part of his payment. Oh, yeah. It it was like uh he paid me that and some other shit. I forget what it was. Um but yeah, he fucked up because one of the first nights he kept going all he kept buying in over and over again. I'm like, bro, you owe me like 300 ADA already. And he's like, nah, I'm going to get you. And I fucking beat him. He went all in on me like four times in a row, four times he lost. Um, but, yeah, th- that was fun. Uh, yeah, that's, they're gonna that's get solid. Bigger. Dude, Watch. I, I got to I gotta learn how to play poker or something because I do not know how to play. Like, I, I played it maybe a few times, but I'm not good. And I feel like it's something that I could get into if I had time. Um, I would definitely. I, I love to throw down in cards and, and get and get salty and spicy. You know how I do. So uh, I don't have to brush up over this holiday season. Yeah, fucking shot dog supposed to be a cowboy. I thought all cowboys do is chill in the saloon and get into shootouts over some motherfucker trying to be a cheat. You call me a cheat? You know what I mean? Like they're in the saloon. It always happens. But um, yeah, he don't. He 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 makes good plays and shit, but. Uh, he hasn't won a lot of the tournaments, but my hope is that by fucking, I don't know, sometime early next year, we have a big tournament for like a thousand ADA each buy-in and where the fucking grand prize is like 10,000 ADA or some shit or 20, the, the, that we, imagine, imagine we get enough motherfuckers to buy in and the grand prize is like a hundred thousand ADA or some shit. That'll be sick. That'll Yo, definitely- make a, make. You can make a whole tournament and then have the finals be like live at CNFT Con and have like a whole thing that that it's like an attraction of the event and then like you know because it's fucking Vegas so it could be like an all in event or you could brand it as something double or nothing whatever you want to name it kind of thing get all like casino swag and shit like that got this big table in the center of the Stoners Club and fucking the epic battle of the final for like ten thousand or however much it is it would be so dope. Yo, that's a great fucking idea. That's a great fucking idea. And you know, 
this this last CNFT con we linked up with a with a fucking um dispensary. We could link up with a fucking casino and be like, yo, this is a crypto fucking poker tournament and shit. It's like a big deal. All kinds of crypto on the line. We need a fucking table. You know they let like friends have their own little tournament and rent a table. So we could do it for the Stoners Club and rent a table and have that be like the finals. I would love to break Willie Boy's heart and Mitch's like on the final table and shit for a hundred grand, like a hundred thousand Ada, a million Ada. You know, maybe we get Uncle Charlie involved. He's all stoned and drunk and he likes to gamble and shit. And then we fucking do it like fucking big time. Everybody's holding on. Like instead of their wives or girlfriends, everyone's holding on to their fucking blow up dolls that I took, you know, to for the festivities and shit. Fuck that. I got a <laughs> massage, bro. I'm getting a massage. <laughs> Yo, that'll be sick. That'll be epic. That'll be like one of the greatest things ever. Did you see what the fuck the Stonish Club did now? They fucking did a poker tournament, and they had blow-up dolls all up in the casinos. Fucking wild. Um, hell yeah, I'm down for that. Uh, I think that's a great yeah. idea, bro, to have, like, a, a Stoners Club uh, tournament at the, uh, what, what's that fucking hotel called? Fucking, whatever whatever the, all of them the black the, west, girls, the, the west east gate end. the west but, gate bro no, yeah no wait the west gate was in colorado though right no nah, the west gate girl. that was las oh vegas. yeah yeah that's yeah, right yeah. that's right but uh the gaylord yeah, bro, the gate that's it the fucking poker room was like all by itself so like it's something that i feel like could be easily done uh it should be like the day before kind of thing or whatever you know what i mean that would that'd be super dope if we could uh, figure that out. Yo, right now I am 5th out of 29th in uh, Bizarre Stars Hold'em tournament. First of all, I don't know how you're playing another tournament if you haven't even sent me my junkie from the last tournament yet. So hey. I don't know how you got, I don't know how hey. you got time for another tournament. Hey, uh, here don't we go. worry. Here's a taste of my own medicine. Here it, we go. It's in my wallet. <laughs> it's like it's in your wallet, but it's in my wallet. And and you know it's it's safe there. Yeah, can you hear fud, me? Fud, fud. Am, yeah. am I good? Yeah, you're good, Tom. We can hear you. What, what up, guys? But uh, uh, Joe, just like just like Willie Boy said, your voodoo is still in my wallet. It's safe right now. I haven't gotten to it. Damn, I'm getting deboed left and right. It's like it's both ours. We just keep it at his house. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's it. Just of your own medicine. It's like when you had a Sega Genesis and you just left it at your friend's house for like three years. And it was just always there. And you're like, yeah, I'll come get it sometime. And you grow up and you're like fucking 15. You're like, yo, you still got that thing? That's crazy. I can't believe that. There's definitely going to be some NFTs that are like that five, ten years from now. Where you're just like, yo, you still have the thing in your wallet? And you're like, oh, fuck yeah, I do. It's going to be like an ancient dinosaur of the blockchain. It's going to be awesome. I fucking love it. Yo, when I was in, um, what was that, like 6th grade? 11, 11, 12, 6th, 7th grade. Uh, my uncle Caesar, may he rest in peace, uh, was living with us at the time. And he was a heroin addict, right? In and out of prison and shit, whatever. My mom's trying to help him out. Um, and he's also trying to, I don't know if he couldn't get heroin or he was trying to kick the habit, but I keep in mind, I don't know what the fuck's going on at the time. All I know is that he had me open up the piggy bank and go to like the liquor stores and like the little 99 cent, like all the little stores in the neighborhood and to buy as many NyQuil's as I could. Right. And he's like, just go buy a lot of NyQuil. Like just get as many NyQuil's as you can. So I'm like, to me, you know, when you're a kid, to me, it was just like a cool mission. Like, Oh shit. I'm fucking Nyquil cool collecting right now, you know? Like, I got to do what I got to do. Um, So, fucking, I, I come back with, like, I don't know, like, 10 Nyquils and shit from walking around, you know, like, a few blocks. And um, I didn't know what he I didn't know what he was. I don't know if he was doing a science experiment or what. Like, I'm not knowing what's going on. And then I see him pour them all into a fucking cup and just, he, he fucking drank them all. Like, he just drank a bunch of Nyquil and shit. And I was like, what the fuck is he doing? Like, why did he do that? Like, what is he doing? 
And like you know, like half an hour later, hour later, he he, you could tell he's in a good mood, like he's vibing hard. <laughs> like I was like, yo, he fucking just OD'd on Nyko and shit, having a good time. And um, fucking that. It, it, the reason that came to my mind is because, you know, when I was a, you know, when you're a kid, like fucking nobody likes medicine. Nobody likes to take their spoonful of medicine. Like everyone's like, kids got to get forced and shit, or it's got to get mixed with something or whatever. And now all my fucking, all my little cousins, all my little homies, they all drink lean, which is pretty much like medicine and shit. Like all day, that's all they want. They're looking for it. They're searching for that shit. They like to mix it with the most exotic fucking sodas of the world. It, it trips me the fuck out. Like, yo, when you're a kid, you're trying to avoid shit. Then you're an adult and it's like, get me as much as that shit as possible, bro. I'm trying to get fucked up. Yo, that's fucking wild, dude. I never, I never did any of those things, but it's definitely something that I've seen been around. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's something. Maybe that's, maybe that's how they're gonna get rid of uh, uh, SBF. You know what I mean? Give him some Nyquil with like, uh, you know, a little, a little tinge of something in there, kind of thing. I mean, there's Yo, a lot of talking about. Of, you know, he, he didn't kill himself. Nudes. That's one of the. That's one of the main ways. To whack somebody in prison, like all the like the Mexican mafia and the Aryan Brotherhood and the beat, like they all know it's called a hot shot, right? They call it a hot shot, and that's when they give somebody some uncut heroin on purpose so they could fucking OD, not know, you know what I mean? So they could like fucking do too much, and a, a lot of a lot of fucking mobsters have got killed in their cell like that, and then they just call it like a, oh, oh he overdosed or whatever. Nah, he got whacked, he got killed. They give him a bad batch like on purpose. So, I mean, anything could happen to this dude, but most likely it's gonna be on some Epstein shit. You know what I mean? It, that that shit. Look, I've been to the facilities and the cells where Epstein died. Right? I, I've seen, and when they got you on suicide watch, I, I've been I've been on suicide watch. Not because I was suicidal, just because when you're new to any facility, um, they take away your shoelaces and anything that you could hang yourself with, or like they, uh, like on purpose, like they make sure. And then on the ones that um, after like a few hours and you get processed, they just put you in regular general population. But the motherfuckers that really are on suicide watch, they're getting checked like every every half hour, every hour. A fucking uh, cop got to b- stop by his fucking door and look in his window and ask him to respond and be like, yo, inmate, whatever, whatever number, um, how are you or whatever, acknowledge your, me or whatever, you know, whatever they fucking ask to make sure he's alive and not fucking acting weird or whatever. They ain't got to put a straight jacket on them or whatever. Um, so when I heard what had happened at that fucking, at the New York, at the New York fucking federal facility and that, that he had hung himself, I was like, yo, he got whacked right away. I was like, he, I mean, you already thought he, something like that was going to happen? Like, to begin with, you're like, oh, man, I hope he don't disappear. Witness protection program or whatever, you know, like some of these fucking high-level drug kingpins. That happens to them all the time. Like, one day you're fucking eating lunch with them in the chow hall, and then everything seems fine. Then the next day the fucking U.S. Marshals come get him out his cell, and you never hear from him again. And you find out, you know, three months down the line, he's testifying against the other drug kingpin and shit. And you're like, oh, man, motherfucker was collecting information this whole time. We're over here having lunch, playing chess and shit. Um, anyway, so I, I don't believe none of that shit. If they want to keep old boy alive, they'll keep him alive. If they want him dead, he'll be dead. You can't do nothing like in the feds, the BOP, the Bureau of Prisons. They, they do not fuck around like... It, man, I could tell you so many fucking stories, some shit I probably can't even say on this motherfucker, because, you know, like, I wouldn't be surprised if they'll fucking find a way to track me down and be like, oh, back in you go. You, you, we told you not to say nothing about what's going on in here. Like, uh, it, it's, it's fucking wild, bro. I don't even trust... I don't even trust that they didn't fucking gas my cell one day and knock me out and do some type of fucking medical experiment experiment on me like a fucking you like a UFO and shit. You know what I mean? Abducting the fucking human from the window. Like, how would I know? I wouldn't even know. I wouldn't even know if they did that shit. 
They fucking they they took all my shit. They they got my DNA, my fucking saliva. They they you know how they almost took a gallon of blood out of my fucking arm one time when we went to medical. They did that to every inmate. Like, man, that that shit, that shit, that shit was wild, bro. I don't I don't trust none of that shit. Um, so whatever happens to fucking SBF. It's because they wanted it to happen. Just like the fact that he got arrested right before this thing. You know how many people were looking forward to hearing him talk? I mean, he already said a lot of shit on the spaces. Yo, by the way, Twitter Spaces got a shout out today from one of the rep. I don't know if you've seen that, dudes. It was like four hours long, but one of the dudes got me happy because he's like, well, SBF said on a Twitter space yesterday. And then he started quoting them and shit. Yo, that's it's so wild, man. I mean, the things that you're saying about like uh, the what will happen to them and, and and whatever they want happen to them will happen to them. I think that you know they definitely probably have a huge degree of control. And uh, it seems to be that in this case, he's got a lot of extensive connections with a lot of different people in very high places. And I feel like the stakes for this are kind of unmatched, honestly, compared to any other sort of criminal case. And I don't know, maybe B- Bernie Madoff and Enron and all those people, like, they're directly involved with, like, probably some big names and economics and uh, politics and stuff like that. But this one was just, like, systemic throughout everything. I mean, it just touched so many different, like, walks of life, and especially people in positions of money and power. Tom Brady, fucking, uh, you know what I mean? Like, all these different actors, actresses, a sports arena, a fucking politician, donations different people in the industry regular everyday retail customers like it just goes all the way down the line and it's just like so systemic to the point where it almost seems like a fiction or like super duper convenient for them to have like a reason to make new laws about every single level about everything right and whatever it is orchestrated or not like the ripple effect of it could be like so fucking profound it's wild and uh, it's definitely it's definitely going to be crazy to see whatever it is that happens to him kind of thing. And I posted that picture up at the top and you can look at his face and I don't know. I don't want to read into it too much because photography is just a little snapshot moment in time. And sometimes the stars line up to make people appear in different ways. But he definitely looks a little out of place, a little shook right there. And, and there was like some reports that is like parents were like joking about every time he was in his little hearing today about when he was like, called a fugitive and some things like and so it's just like in this crazy position where he's just like so above the law because of who he's connected to that like standing in a courtroom he's still just like laughing it off kind of thing so it's definitely uh i think i don't know just the, the mechanics of it it's like there were so many points in time in the last month where people were like yo this is a movie and every day it's just like another fucking episode it goes off and then like the credits roll and you're like, yo what's gonna happen on the next one like it's wild dude it's so fucking wild it's like a netflix series and some shit's gonna drop pretty soon who knows where it's gonna go this season so i'm here for it buckle up yeah to me like the picture you posted up top the the look on his face is like Yo, I thought I paid the fucking Bahamas government off already, y'all. I let them take all their FTA, only them take their shit out. What the fuck? How come they sold me out? Um, But it also could be like, yo, try to look like you're scared because you already know your uncle and your auntie already paid off Maxine and shit, and they fucking arrested you so you didn't have to testify tomorrow. Like, You'll be out in a week. You'll be good. I'll be all right. But yet the fucking Illuminati's like, nah, we're going to whack them. It's too, it's too much of a shit show. Let's just whack them. It's cheaper to whack them. Um, so. Definitely cheap. Yo, we, Yo. Got, we got Bone Pool up in the house. Bone Pool. But I mean, going conspiracy on it, we needed a black swan to get our bear market to like settle. You know, we needed some big, giant, crazy story of something happening. And we talked about this like back in the summertime. Like, there's going to be something that happens in the fall. Like, man, like, November is going to be the time. You know, like, it'll do it. You know, Something will come up in the media. I don't know what it's going to be, but like it's going to be a war. And it's going to be something. That's, you know, here we are. Fucking a. <laughs> Try that by a fucker for ten grand. Aww. Yo, you might be right, Boom Pool. You might be right, Boom Pool. There might be something to that. But Nude touched on something that I think is very important, and it's the numbers, right? Like I. 
I wasn't Bernie Madoff is like the number one Ponzi scheme, uh, like of all time, right? And I wasn't locked up. He was in he was in prison when I was, but I, never in the same prison. But the number two, like number four and number five guy, I was in prison with in Lompoc, right? And I, I still remember their names. It's Reed Slacken. He was a Scientologist, uh, fucking minister or some shit, minister of Scientology. Um, and th- there's a MSNBC episode on this shit. He, he, he got up to like a hundred million something that he was fucking getting from different actors and directors and producers and shit in Hollywood from his Scientology connection with Tom Cruise and fucking John Travolta. And I forget, it's like a long list of motherfuckers, right? I don't remember all of them off the top of my head. But this motherfucker, like, went deep on him. This motherfucker got, like, as much time as I did, fucking asshole. Um, but he was cool. My bad. I'm just, I, I trip out on, like, the government. Like, yo, you fucked up this many people's lives. Motherfuckers committed suicide and all that. Um, but you get the same, because you got money and good lawyers and a team of, like, four or five lawyers. You get as much time as this motherfucker from the streets that grew up with his uncle having him buy NyQuil since he was, like, fucking 10 years old. But it's all good, you know? Um, anyway, fucking, uh, th- that dude fucking, uh, what was the other homie's name? Um, they they used to argue with each other because they were different types of Jews, right? Like, one was Ashkenazi and the other one was the. Sephardic, or I think that's how you say it. And, uh, he used to be like, "Nah, I'm you're the... about to say Skip Bayless, bro." Uh, <laughs> nah, Shannon Sharp, because that was that was something crazy. Stuart, Stuart Wolf, Stuart Wolf. He he he's the guy who invented. Uh, he blew up during like the the fucking the dot com days, right? Like back, he was with all these dudes from Yahoo and fucking Google and fucking Amazon when it first started, and he was the guy who invented. Realtor.com. Realtor.com ain't as big a thing now, but back then it was, especially at the time this dude got arrested, right? Like it was like mid two thousands, late two thousand. Whenever that internet bubble burst or whatever it was that happened, um, he he. So when that happened, he tried to say like on record that they had made more money than they actually did, or had more clients or whatever. So his stock price wouldn't go down on Realtor.com. Um, and it didn't, and everyone thought everything was good, and then they found out after that he was fucking bullshitting, so, um, the fucking stock crowd, or whatever the fuck they gave him, but, um, that was, like, worth millions and shit as well, and, um, man, there's a bunch of dudes, there's a bunch of dudes, a bunch of dudes, and uh, you wouldn't even know, and the only, the only time I, I found out was, like, when we'd be watching MSNBC American Greed, and a fucking episode would come on of one of these dudes, and they'd be in their cell, and everybody else would be out watching it, like, oh, shit, damn, look at this one. The the other dude, the other dude that used to play soccer with us is this dude named Billy. I, I forgot his last name, some Italian last name, and he was the owner of the San Jose Sharks. He had another big one, like another one that was like 60-something million dollars that he, he had a fucking scheme on, and the whole his whole drive was that because he – he wanted to own the San Jose Sharks. He's a big fan of, like, hockey and shit or whatever. So he started fucking, you know, fucking um, did kind of like a Ponzi scheme as well where he was taking money from all kinds of people and using it for other shit and telling them, like, yeah, no, nah, you're good. We're just waiting for your returns. or You don't want to buy out now. You're going to make more, you know? But it really just fucking in one pocket out the other or whatever. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, a bunch of dudes. Oh, and if that was going to be in there, and he's going to stay alive, he's going to have to change his attitude. Because if he was my cellmate, I'll probably take flight on him myself to keep it real. I'm like, I'm like I might. I might. <laughs> they put that fool in the cell with me. It ain't going to be a fucking good time um, for him. He ain't going to be in fucking shorts and fucking picking his nose and shit and acting like it's a motherfucker get a haircut. You know what I mean? Start fucking doing some burpees and shit and clean up this fucking cell. If not, you can't cell with me. If not, there's going to be a problem, homie, because, yeah, it's different because they put them them white-collar motherfuckers in there. They don't give a fuck who, you know, they put them in there with a street motherfucker from, like, the the mafia or something. They don't give a fuck. It's all in the same. That's the one thing that tripped me out. Like, my first first couple months in there, I'm like, this dude's over here playing chess. 
this Taliban dude's over there in the corner fucking praying and shit. He's a terrorist. This other dude's over here. Like, it's a, the fucking, like, the population is weird. It's like, yo, what the fuck is going on? I was just trying to sell some dope. What am I doing in here? <laughs> yo, I pinned up Reed Slacking at the top. He also founded Earthlink, I guess, which was, like, the number two internet provider. Oh, yeah, behind... that too. <laughs> yeah. Behind America Online, I pinned it up at the top in the Wikipedia article. You can see his uh, his face. That's crazy. You were in jail with this uh, famous dude at the Yo, same time. He was my homie. <laughs> we were at the same halfway house here in Hollywood as well. We were in the same prison, and then we we're at the we were in the same drug program in there, and then we were at the same halfway house. He got out exactly when I got out. This is like in two thousand, late two thousand twelve, two thousand thirteen, and he got sent to the same. Uh, halfway house in Hollywood, which funny enough was right next to the Scientology church, the big old famous one right there. And I didn't even know he like, he had gave me the Dianetics book. Right. And I just, I just took it like, Oh cool. Another crazy book to read about, you know, this Al Ron Hubbard dude. I didn't know he was a fucking Scientologist, like minister or whatever. Like one of the main dudes till, uh, till I seen that episode and shit that came out after. But yeah, th- this dude, he's cool as fuck. At the halfway house, he bought us all pizza, right? Like 50 motherfuckers. 50 motherfuckers. And he's like, you guys want some pizza? And then uh, we're like, hell yeah, we want some pizza. We all just got out and shit, you know? Hell yeah, we want some pizza. He fucking bought pizza for the whole fucking halfway house. It got him into a little bit of trouble with the dude running the halfway house. But the whole time we were eating, we we're like damn how much money like out of all them fucking millions how much you think he put on the side like you know in some offshore account or some shit or like yo because he's buying us all pizza and shit but um i think they whacked him a few years later to be honest i think i don't know if it was the scientologist or who, who, is he dead i don't know I didn't yeah, yeah know he, he died did. he died a few years ago he died a few oh, years shit. ago and i i still keep in touch with um oh 2015 yeah yeah, yeah, he died. They whacked him, though. He had just got out. He was healthy. He's buying everybody pizza. He had all kinds of plans and shit, right? They whacked him, bro. They, they yeah. fucking whacked him. If it wasn't the Scientologist who whacked him, it was whoever, somebody that lost money who whacked him or, you know, the government themselves. But I, I, I remember when I heard, like, because hey, I still keep in touch with – um. You know, a few fools like from the feds. Like we all, it's funny we're all on Facebook. Like <laughs> all of us are on Facebook and shit. And um, you like you you see like when something happens to someone that we we're all with, like you know, someone will start reposting the fucking rest in peace or the funeral or whatever. And as soon as that happened, like we were like, yo, they whacked them, bro. They definitely whacked them. Um, but it's because when there's that much money involved. Like, say you work your whole life starting a business or whatever, or your dad left you your fucking multi-million dollar business or whatever, and then you invest in some shit and you lose it all and your whole family was depending on you. How many people were depending on you? Employees and family and the house and the bills and everything. I mean, you you can't, you know, some motherfuckers are going to whack some motherfuckers. Fuck that. This fool, you know, fucking Tom Brady lost Giselle and shit. Like, you know? Yo, and and just think about just think about like the scope of how these uh, types of schemes have changed, like are scaled over time. Like this dude, uh, just looking at the Wikipedia, I like put a little screenshot there. His whole thing from eighty six to two thousand one was only five hundred ninety three million dollars. The FTX thing is like tens, if not hundreds, of like billions, billions of dollars. Like it's so much more money. It's crazy that people are just like, we don't know where it went. This dude's owed this. This thing's locked up there, and it's like they don't even know where to begin with all this stuff. Like that dude was saying in the in the court hearing today, it was just like, "Yeah, we find wallets, we find the seed phrases, and then we have to like transfer it all." And they're just like picking up pieces from a fucking food fight, Swiss cheese incident, and there's ingredients all over the kitchen. They're like, "I don't know where this fucking thing came from. This looks like a piece of meat. This looks like a drumstick. I don't know." It's so wild to think about. Again, I think like really the scope of it is just really, really fucking remarkable and uh, definitely interesting time. And I agree with what Bonepool said that it is like the cool like apocalypse narrative of this bear cycle that was needed 
like it was going to happen in some shape or form kind of thing, some Black Swan event after all of the other previous Black Swan events. And then this one is the giant lightning bolt that can bring things down. So I think it's going to be real interesting to see where uh, things go. Uh, it's probably going to inspire a lot of new laws to go on the books and people to think about, well, you can't do this and you can't do that and all this different stuff. And it's going to be another cycle of that until things, until things ride off into the sunset in a different way. Uh, but hell yeah, it's fucking wild right now. Uh, most definitely this is the FTX donors club. Now a big education push, push on not keeping your shit anywhere, but your own fucking wallet. Yeah, for sure. Um, Man, uh, it, it's like it, it, it's all bad. Like it's so fishy. Like when when I'm I'm watching the hearing and shit, and I'm watching who who are these dudes? News? These are senators or fucking House of Representative motherfuckers? Which 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 fucking branch are these fools? Um, asking from, questions from the hearing from the hearing today. Yeah, who, I mean, they're just they're senators in general, but then there's like committees that they all have to serve on in different ways. Mm. Like it's like catalyst circle. That's the <laughs> it's like their yeah. banking circle. Yeah, then- yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it trips me out that these, they're asking, uh, this old fucking, this other dude fucking, by the way, was it, I'm watching it. There's so much information. That I didn't know that when I'm watching it, I'm like, what? For example, uh, one of the senators was like, you know, they got the new FTX CEO or representative of this dude. Um, and they're like, hey, how you been? Haven't seen you since you took over Enron when that happened last time. Like, it's like, yo, this is the same dude. <laughs> I'm like, this is, it's like, this is homie and shit. Like, yeah, I remember it on, the, on the last one and shit. I'm like, yo. Yo, it's a joking? movie. <laughs> it's a movie, dude. It's like they always cast the same bad guy to always play like the bankster or some shit like that. But it's real life. It's fucking amazing. Yo, and then, <laughs> then you got the senator. You got the other senators, right? Like two or three of them were like, "Yo." Um, they're, they're like, "Who, who, who in government is protecting this mother? Who within us is protecting this motherfucker? Who at the DOJ, the Department of Justice, who oversees the BOP and all these other motherfuckers? Who in there?" made the fucking genius decision if they're trying to prosecute him to not have him come testify at this fucking hearing where they could have got all kinds of fucking information. You know what I mean? Like officially apart from a Twitter space where he's running his mouth the whole time. Like who the fuck made that decision, right? They're like not, they're in the government, not trusting each other. They're in there like, yo, who, who made that call? We're going to find out. There's like two or three of the senators that like, we're going to find out who the fuck made the call on arresting this dude before this fucking hearing. And um, keep in mind, that all could be bullshit, too. Like, they could all be in on it. Like, yo, we're going to arrest him because uh, he might say something stupid <laughs> and get us all fucked up. So, yeah, just fucking get him. Keep his mouth. I mean, that's the, that's what a lot of people think, that it's like get better. Like, from a prosecutor's standpoint, it would be ideal to have your uh, subject or that you're trying to arrest, like, spill all the beans like, on record and fucking uh, under oath with the United States government and then and then just, like, arrest him, like, immediately after, you know what I mean? Or to fucking do it, like, live because he just would have been, like, live streaming from his house playing video games in his shorts or whatever, you know? Uh, but, like, yeah, I totally think that there's a, a super logic of practice. There's a logic for why things are timed the way they are in this particular case, and it's advantageous for some someone out there, right, and himself included, to not have gone on record today, uh, because there's already just like so much evidence out there of him self incriminating himself on Twitter Spaces and talking to these fucking people. Uh, it's it's amazing, man. Do you see the Coffeezilla video? That dude who does like a YouTube series, he has this video where he's like, I accidentally uh, convinced Sam Bankman Freed to. Uh, admit to fraud like that's the name of the video it has like two million views on fucking youtube and it's like clear evidence where he like says that people who put like their money in the cash base accounts that's just like a spot trading right so you just put your money in hold it it's not used for risky trades or leverage trades or anything like that 
he was mixing them with the people who had signed on for more risky ways to play around with the crypto markets and FTX kind of thing. So it's like that was a uh, an on record like admission about the whole mechanics of 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 this like unraveling kind of thing, and it's just like it's so fucking wild to think about what's his motivation for just going on every Twitter space with these normie people and trying to just like talk to them, whether it be saving face or just trying to like drown everybody in all too much information that you can't even like keep up. Like it's just like sensory overload kind of thing. It's, it's definitely wild and it's going to take because of that a longer time to digest it and uh, you know, see the true ramifications in due time. So we will see. We will definitely see. I know we got. Sí, we sí got cierto. Uh, uh, disculpa, amigo Noodles, pero tengo que puchar el botón de SAP. Para, sí, porque nuestro amigo Patricio le quiero preguntar a él qué piensa de qué pasó ahora con nuestro gobierno. Patricio, por favor. Hola, amigos y hermanos. ¿Y hermanas? Uh, no. Sí, oh. sí, sí. ¿Es hermanas aquí? ¿Está hermanas aquí? No. No sé exactamente porque eso pregunta es una cosa personal. Mm. <ríe> Muy bien. Uh, uh, hablo con un, una um, maestra uh, dos, dos veces por semana. Eh, una... una una, una mesa de Costa Rica y mm, puedo no um, puedo 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 no uh, anyway um, <laughs> es importante que que practico que practico, que, que practico mucho y eh, en Twitter Spaces y con con la mesa con los, mis amigos con cuesta grupo <laughs> no yo no sé But um, it's been good. It's been good practicing. Qué bueno, qué bueno. Me gustaría, me gustaría decir algo para ti a escuchar solamente en español. Creo que el clave de entiendo una lengua es usarlo con su té, con sus amigos, con sus familias, con sus chicas o mujeres. El clave mm, es divertir. Yes. La clave es divertido y tener un sentido en su corazón. Hay que tener un significado en su vida. Significado importante. Entonces, mucho gusto, mi amigo. Me llamo David. Yo, Nudes, I'm sorry, but I stick to my fucking idea that in the past life you were a pimp. I swear, in a Cadillac. And you're you obviously you're you know pimping some Spanish hoes you know here and there as well because the way you were dropping that right now I swear it was like yeah 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 let, let me drop some knowledge on you and shit in your own tongue. <laughs> yeah, I love languages. It's the most fun thing ever because you could just get into it, have a wild ride, and uh, get down and dirty with some ideas and how to express them. But it's a real good thing, Patrick. Using language is 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 language is people, man. And you always got to have some sort of meaning and relationship in your heart. And if you can create those meanings and have those connections and it has that effective sort of emotional connection between different memories in your life, then all of the structural difficulties and nuances and all those things won't even be a challenge any longer because you won't have to think of them because you'll have something called fun sometimes with some cool friends. So I totally support Usando la lengua en el <laughs> it's it's funny because um one i mean it's just a one-on-one -on -one conversation so there's not a bunch of people listening so i find when i try i part of why i come in here and i try it here is like i need to start practicing more in like front of other people and just you know bombing and um because i'm much freer i guess otherwise but uh you know nudes You know, I would love to. I'd love to practice some more with everybody. I was, I was like, I had to call Jenny, and I was like, fuck it. Like, I know too many people, so I'm just gonna start calling all of y'all and just, you know, messing up. <laughs> Yo, you should follow Ada Adams into some spaces where he does uh, the Spanish ones because he he said he's gonna do his uh, 
like I think a uh, high science space, but he's going to do it in Spanish. And science is a really easy um, advanced topic that you could get into because a lot of the like Latin based words um, sound really, really kind of similar in English. So content wise, you already probably know how like certain things like thermodynamics, for example, might work. And then the explanation of them will have a bunch of keywords that'll carry you through and just listening along. It could be a really cool sort of experience that uh, would be meaningful for you. And for whatever reason, there's certain accents that just kind of I vibe with or it's just like it's easier for me to get into. And his his accent in particular, I guess because he's a friend and we talked on Stoner's Club for like 100 million hours. But like he's he's one of the easier uh, conversational partners in a second language for me, at least kind of thing. So shout out to Ada Adams. Yo, Patrick, how often do you check your wallet? Because, like, a week or two ago, I pimped the fuck out of your wallet. Like, I straight went hardcore. Fucking Will Smith pimp slapped the fuck out of your wallet. And I don't know if you've even noticed yet. You know what? It's funny you say that. Because I was looking the other day, and I was like, did I send this shit here? Where did this come from? Like, I didn't know what it was. Okay, that makes. Thank you for answering a question I had a couple of days ago. But I was like, I don't know what's going on. Um, hold on, I need to go go pull that back up. <laughs> but what drunk me by sober me this time? I know. I was like, what did Bonepool send me? Oh, yo, I fucking straight sexually harassed that fucking wallet. Like I went. <laughs> and you know what? I think I thought I was like, did it, was it like a big like? Weed pool giveaway or some shit. I was like, dude, they sent a bunch of shit. Okay, this makes way more sense. Now I gotta go pull it up. Hold on. I sent it with your voodoo. Patrick, oh. I just gotta say, man, when I was reading the uh I was reading the uh the captions down here while you were speaking Spanish and it popped up I support the KKK. <laughs> <laughs> I knew there was something wrong. I was like, dude, I didn't get a screenshot of that. What the fuck? Can I can I file a complaint? Yeah, screenshots or it didn't happen. <laughs> I love that. Um, I guess I need to choose my words better in Spanish. Yeah, I, I don't know what Twitter thought you were saying, but I mean, it thinks you like the KKK quite a bit. <laughs> Hey, for all the love that people have given to AI kind of stuff, it's a real English-centric kind of world on the internet. And when you start getting into other languages and stuff like that, especially more obscure ones like Vietnamese, it fucking sucks still. Just throwing that out there. So a little ways to go. Humans are pretty diverse, and they have a great variety of ways to communicate with one another. Machines are seemingly real good in one of them, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. Oh, I know all about it, man. Uh, my, my girl's from Nepal, and... Uh... Man, Google Translate can't even comprehend what she or any of her friends are saying. Like, it's just, it's just lost. <laughs> I tried to do some Vietnamese poetry after seeing like some of the poems that I could get in English, and people are like, I made this fucking poem about decentralization, and it's so smart, and it could like rap and rhyme and do stuff about Cardano and and blockchain transactions and latency and all these like advanced topics that they could make into some like rhyme scheme or something like that and then i literally was like write a birthday poem in vietnamese and then i was like this sucks and i tried to like get it to change it i was like write it again but like add these ideas or something like that and just like the level of just absolute incompetence was so obvious in the same way that you see on google translate i'm sure from something like tibetan it's like real obvious and Vietnamese is kind of notoriously bad on uh, Google Translate because it's a language that has a ton of real subtle nuances that are like masterful in an artistic sense for when people communicate and have different like expressive forms of uh, suggestiveness and like uh, metaphors and things like that. So it's got a long way to go. That's definitely true. And speaking of which, we got Pyro here. He's coming from the bottom of Shillomanius, making his way back up to the top, getting those votes. What's going on, Pyro? j j j j g unit Oh, dude, you, you've you been practicing, I can tell. j j j j j j j j j j j Yeah, I know. It's my favorite letter, G. Because I'm a G. I'm a gangster. You should do P. 
P unit for pyro. That's right, P unit. I like it. That's the that's gonna be my uh my uh my suit. Nah, squad. pyro, your Jew unit. Your Jew unit. Um, they had you got your own thing going on. I don't right. know if you watched the Vlad TV interviews with fucking um, what's his name, Tony Yayo, but he's talking about. He's like, oh yeah, the Jew talking, unit. Talk, They're fucking talk, stronger than the Jew talk, unit. <laughs> Joe, 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 are you talking about my my fellow Jew, Kanye West? Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, that's a like Kanye to, to man. You know what? I don't even talk about Kanye. So not, real nothing, quick, not, yeah, like Kanye to Kanye it up. It's like, not Kanye Pyro. Is, can you stop disrespecting? The artist formerly known as, please, it's Ye now, and he's coming out with his own line of yarmulkes coming soon. Um, I think he signed a deal with Nike, so you're going to have the, the yarmulkes with the Nike swoosh on the side. Um, make sure you get in quick, Pyro. They'll probably sell, sell out like fast. Dude, I bought, a, I bought a bag, a bag of them. Oh, you pre-ordered yeah. already, huh? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm but not even Jewish, people, and I might rock one. You know what I mean? Like as a fat, you know. <laughs> Yo, hey Joe, are you Jewish? That's flashy me back, man. Joe, you <laughs> my convert? buddy had a poncho. <laughs> nah. He sewed a fucking starter patch on his fucking poncho, so he's like the only dude walking around the neighborhood with his like big old Mexican fucking poncho on. It's got a big fucking starter thing on the back of it. Right, but but like if you if if you know anything about Jews is. Uh, for some reason, uh, we like to culturally appropriate basketball. We love our uh, we love our Lakers, and uh, we want everything that's like the Nike swoop on it. And uh, that's just how life is. So, um, yeah. So, so buy my. I'm selling these uh, yarmulkes with the Nike swoop and the and the. It says, "Hey, yay! I'm a Jew." On it, actually, it says, "Hey, yay! I'm a Jew." <laughs> You're crazy. Hey, did you watch the FTX thing today, though? The hearings and shit? Uh, you know, I don't know, but if anyone wants uh, Sam Bankman freed, the Jews are no longer taking him in. Uh, he's not one of us, and we pass him to someone else. Uh, <laughs> you just, you can't go to him. What the fuck, Pyro? <laughs> you just like that, huh? He lost the draft. What what, what episode? What was that uh, on Chappelle's show, The Draft? <laughs> but half of the Caucasians we don't accept them either. Yeah, yeah, the Mexicans. Uh, uh-uh, uh, he ain't one of us either. <laughs> I'll pass them off to the Asians. <laughs> y- yo, I like uh, Bone Pool's thing up there where it says neither Bohemian or U.S. halves SBF. That'd be funny. Uh. The other thing is, I think I think the real winner here is uh, Doctor Fauci, bro. Um, Elon said one thing, and Sam Bankman got fucking arrested. Uh, I just think he pulls a lot of strings, bro. And um, yeah, that's that's a that's a deep road to go down right there. Yo, who was going hard on Fauci? Yeah, he was he arrested. What the, the question is, was he arrested because he was about to testify? Of course, to Pyro, about? of course. Come on. You know damn well. That's the damn reason he was arrested. He's getting whacked. He's, he's <laughs> yeah. getting... He, okay, it's one of two things. It's, it can only be one of two things. Because if for damn sure it wasn't just a fucking good police work and they decided uh yeah we finally could arrest them now it definitely was planned right so it's one of two things either they arrested them to whack them like they did epstein or maybe they arrested them to protect him it it can only be one of two things because it wasn't just hey it feels like a good day to arrest them now <laughs> like no nah. I definitely, I definitely think it's the latter. <laughs> y'all, y'all pin my space coins tweet. <laughs> what are y'all doing, <laughs> dude? Hell yeah, yo, this is epic. I love this fucking thing. I hope Kyle, you keep just like shit posting or going crazy on the Man. space coins one. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I just got home, dude. I had a, I had a, I had a rough week, and I got, I got to put my dog down tomorrow. So I, I, I didn't have weed all this past. Oh week. man, 
Sorry about no. that, bro. No, no that's I, okay. I, it's I life. Saying, it sucks, but... Terrible. I, I don't have the same. Uh, you know, I had I had I, I got a wolf in college, and it was really cool. He was a pain in the ass, but he was just awesome and just a really good dog. And I, he ended up, I get a husky, and he ended up getting to her, and they had a bunch of puppies, and so I had a bunch of dogs for a long time, and I'm down to two, and so yeah, it sucks, but you know, it's life. But the good, good companions, and but anyway, so I got home and I smoked a fatty, and I'm kind of in a goofy mood. So I did oh, yeah. it. You've, well, come, well, you've well. come to the right Hell place. Yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll smoke yeah. your dog. I'll, I'll smoke, smoke your dog, dog too. Yeah, yeah. No, I know what's up. Come on. That's awesome. Yeah. You guys doing okay? Yeah, we're fucking. I'm yeah, I got a, I got a fucking wallet with a bunch of stuff. I got to figure out what to do with now. Yo, that's so, all fucking so, worth its weight in gold. Well, it don't, it don't weigh nothing, huh? <laughs> but. If it's worth anything, maybe maybe I'll pay your taxes. Just you know. Yo, just... Patrick, the cold is ice. The cold is ice ones. Those, it, like, hold on to those, bro. Like, you you need to hold on to. Them. Not a lot of people have them, and if you ever bump into a wallet where it's in, like, you get all happy. Like that shit, uh, Francois. What was it? What is it, Patrick? Do you know what I'm talking about? Francois. I know. I well. So the, this is this is when I was looking at this wallet. I was like cold as ice token what the fuck is that from and then i was like <laughs> there was all this stuff i was like where the hell did this come from and then i was like moving stuff around wallets just for my own o- ocd-ness um and which is why i was very confused i was like how did i move this stuff and then i just like it just came in like a stoner wrecking ball well, you you know, I I you know it came from a good place. Uh, oh no, I love Patrick. it. I, I love like, it. I love it. All, all them all them fucking months and months of you complaining and complaining and complaining. And one of your biggest gripes and complaints was oh, and complaints the never win. The, the stoner, yeah, I never win. The, I never win the Stoners Club giveaways. Fuck it, this shit is rigged. Blah blah blah, right? Willie Boy and Joe started their own fake NFT giveaway mafia where they fake giveaway shit. Um, and uh, so I was like, you know what? Let me fucking hit them hard with everything I got. You know, I actually started with those uh, cold as ice ones because those are coveted. Um, but yeah, I've pretty much sent you everything ever fucking made related to the Stoners Club. So uh, you're welcome. Gracias, amigo. Ahora los uh, los quejas eh, empieza en español eh, and we restart. So there's going to be a whole new thread, but you've passed the English test. The next one should be easier. Yeah, could you say that physically, though? Could you describe that in, like, verb? Physically? What are you guys talking? Yeah, what the fuck are you guys talking about? <laughs> Describe your NFT physically. Um, if you don't have the skill, you can just say that. I well, I mean, I, I, I think I, I, think, the phys- I think physically fucks it all up. Like, describe yeah. your NFT. <laughs> I, I don't understand the question, so I'm happy to. <laughs> Happy to, to to try. No Nintendo. I mean, no Nintendo. I'm looking, no, no Nintendo. I'm looking at this titanium scrotum, and I'm thinking, like, this is the one I want to describe. I mean, I get excited when I see, you know, another wallet with a scrotum in it. Close your pants. Can you spin and... it around? Is it like the 3D balls? That's the next level. It's 2.0. Yeah. So it's whatever you want it to be. Those it's, are coming soon, though, by the way. 2D, just 2D balls. Lick those balls and spin them around. I, 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 what, what were you trying to ask? I didn't. I, I, now I'm just. Now it's just stuck in my head. Describe it physically. Like, describe the NFT. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How does it? it how does your generative art physically operate? What? Hello. What What do you think that I have made? What what are you talking? What, which NFT? I don't understand which NFT we're talking about. Don't you build clocks or something? Oh, 
Yeah. Okay, but that's not generative. Okay, so C C plus plus C or JavaScript. Um, HTML and it's, JavaScript. So it, it it's not on um, what's that one that kids use? You remember? What was it? Scratch. Oh, Scratch. Roblox. Yeah. Your watch is on. Spice beef. <laughs> Roblox. <laughs> Paint. <laughs> Come on, Roblox. How would you do that if you did, though? Like, what do they use? That's that seems pretty generative to me. You're using a lot of very vague pronouns, and I'm having a hard time knowing who we're talking about. So, if you'd like to get more specific, tripods. <laughs> yeah, Pyro, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Or, like, <laughs> you know, in prison, cascade in pods. Prison, I prefer. In prison programming, there's a lot of programmers in prison. Like almost 100 percent of the population in prison are programmers. A lot of people don't know that. Um, but programming, and there's different. It's like uh, cleaning your cell and doing your burpees and shit. Yo, I'm, I'm programming. They call it program time. I feel programmed right now. Um, yeah, no, I'm just fucking around to be honest with you. I, I don't even know what I said because, like, I was trying to figure out what you said, and then the first thing that came to mind was, "Can you say that physically?" And so, because of uh, my uh, my my illness, uh, aka ADHD, I decided to let you uh, know what was the first thing that I was thinking of. So. Yo, did you see uh, these thousand migrants crossing the Rio Grande in El Paso? Are you guys scared? Um. <laughs> no so, man I'm having trouble hiring people I need people me too the Cardano Caravan to go down and pick them up yo that's wild though I don't even understand what's going on um I, 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 are these the same is this like a caravan like when it was the central it was the um, people coming from Central America, like El Salvador and fucking Honduras and uh, those countries. Because fuck the 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 president in El Salvador, for example, he's on he's like the president from the Philippines, right? Where he's just, oh, you're a gang member, you got a tattoo, fuck you, prison for life, whack him, kill him. Like uh, he, he, they're going hard over there, but. He also, uh, you know, is cool with Bitcoin. So um, the reason there's a lot of migrants from El Salvador is because uh, not because the Bitcoin, but because motherfuckers are getting whacked left and right, put in prison. Even their tombstones are getting destroyed and shit because he's pretty much he wants to, like, erase all fucking evidence that 18th Street and Mara Salvatrucha has even existed. Um, but it, it's crazy that approach. But um, I don't know how how good um that works for the philippines so we'll see what happens in el salvador but i'm wondering if these migrants are part of that movement or it's just a bunch of mexican dudes who were like hey yo the president over there ain't tripping let's go let's get together uh we're gonna be all right <laughs> hmm <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm hearing a lot of crickets. Politics is a touchy subject. Um, and I'm sure some of you just don't want to offend me because you know I'm Mexican. <laughs> well, I mean, what? look, when I, when I was in the Philippines, I was like, why doesn't anybody kill these motherfuckers, right? That was when I was there. Like, I was like, I see the drug dealers. I see the pimps. I see it everywhere. I saw all the fucking, everything that was going on. It was going on right out in the fucking open. And I'm just like, how does nobody in this barangue just fucking like go vigilante and fucking clean up the neighborhood. Like what? There's no neighborhood watch. What the fuck is going on? I was tripping. And then when Duterte came out and said that shit, I was like, dude, that's fucked up. But then like, it took a while for me to realize like, yeah, that's exactly what I was saying when I was there. Like, yeah, go kill them motherfuckers, <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, the older, <laughs> the older wiser me, the older wise, but that was because I was there witnessing it. But the older, wiser me was like, no, nah, man, what the fuck? That's fucked up. Don't tell people to do that, you know? Extra Yo, judicial wild. fucking, so you know? you saying it was so, like, it, maybe it gets, it gets so fucking bad that you need one of these dictator-ass motherfuckers? No, I'm not, I'm not defending anything that's happening anywhere. I mean, you know, I mean, they could have had drug programs or something and cleaned up the fucking neighborhood that way. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah, just from no, my I personal experience, and, but and, and, like, you know, I've seen, like, on Vice, man, like, there's... 
roving bands of motherfuckers down in Colombia that like set the sewers on fire because they know that motherfuckers are living down in the sewers, you know? So you got the homeless population like living underground and then you got these fucking like right wing motherfuckers that go around in the middle of the night and burn them in their fucking sleep. It's fucked up. <laughs> the world is fucked. No, I don't know. I ain't trying to bring anybody down, man. But Brother, I mean, I, oh. and I definitely don't support fucking like the crazy ass dictator shit. But uh, it's, it's just a damn shame that these people feel like they have to leave, you know, and like come here. And then they're going to get here and they're going to realize here is fucked up, too. You know, go, so it's go like the nipples. Go to nipples. Hear me out real quick. Right. Check it out. Um, on spaces, traditionally before the Stoners Club religion and politics and all kinds of controversial shit we normally like wouldn't talk about it right yeah yeah i know i'm but, sorry but, dad I, I didn't mean to cross that line if i no, went a little no, too no, far you're not. Get, hear me out L- listen for like one minute hear me out the stoners club kind of changed that and the reason i think we were able to is because we, we could have these conversations without being disrespectful, you know what I mean? Without getting into a yelling match or whatever. It's like, yo, just say what's on your mind. And the one thing that I love and that got me into Cardano is when I watched the fucking TED Talks and the fucking whiteboard video and all this shit, the one thing that inspired me was like, yo, this possibly could change the world. It's not 100% for sure, but it, it, it it's, it's possible, I believe. And um, one of the parts of changing the world is fixing the world's problems. So you can't fucking fix something unless you can see the problem and, and, and see that it fucking exists. So I love talking about shit like this in the world, and the world is fucked up. And um, I, that's part of one of the reasons I'm here, trying to fix some of that shit. But in order to fix it, we got to talk about it. And not yeah, be Joe, scared. I agree with you 100%, man. 100. 100. Yeah. I'm uh I was I couldn't I couldn't speak earlier. I'm I'm in. What, what are we talking about? I heard 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 you got a bunch of your friends coming over, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard fucking bunch of cousins and uncle. I'm gonna get a call later from a bunch of cousins. Hey, we're here. We're in Texas and shit. Can you pick us up? Um, you know, but fucking um, nah. What we got into was that uh, you know, like the pre- the he's not the president anymore. The ex president of the Philippines. Um, I forget um, Duarte or whatever. Yeah, there you go, Duarte. Uh, it has a, a had a similar style to the current president of El Salvador, which is going hard on the gangs, right? Well, um, which I was thinking because there previously when there's big caravans like this of people uh migrating to the United States crossing the border like this, it was because that was going on. So I was trying to figure out. If the this thing that happened recently, like a day or two ago, where a thousand migrants crossed the Rio Grande in El Paso, I was wondering if it was part of that movement or if it was just a bunch of because what from what I'm hearing, because Elon Musk retweeted some shit yesterday, so I got into it. Um, I, am I am I right when I say that maybe these are just Mexican dudes that found out that Biden and them ain't gonna do shit to them if they cross? And there ain't going to be too many consequences to pay. So they all got together and, yo, let's all cross. It's going to be all right. Because um, it, it's been kind of wild lately, yeah. right? It's been like, like, look, how do you, how do you, how do you raise your kids, right? Um, yo, if you do this wrong or something, there's going to be consequences, right? I'm not going to buy you pizza. You're not going to have a pizza party this Friday um, if you don't clean your room or whatever, right? But when when you have a spoiled little brat that you never follow through with what you say is going to happen and not happen, then, um, the, he, he or she knows there's no consequences to what you're telling me. So I don't have to listen to you. So I'm thinking, is that, is that, um, what's happening here with, with these migrants, which I don't, I don't, why are you blaming? Like you can't blame the migrants. You're going to blame your kid for being a spoiled brat, or you're going to look at the parent and be like, yo, get your fucking child, you know, fucking control this motherfucker. Like, he, he's got no uh, consequences. Um, one should be over after you. Go ahead. Hey, what's up? How's it going, everybody? How's, how's everyone's night? Uh, well, we're talking about migrants right now, um, so that's how that's done. Yeah, no, I heard that. I don't know if you guys have had the uh, chance to listen to um, yesterday. Lex Friedman put out a podcast with like some security specialist that was uh, in charge of doing a lot of uh, narcotics cases in, in, in uh, South America. And what I found crazy was like 
you get these presidents that come over here or that they get into power and they start like really, really fucking shit up. But on, on the flip side, uh, they're, they're also uh, a lot of these people that really try to make a difference. They, they get their families like tortured and, and they get a lot of pressure from these gang, uh, these gang entities. And I thought that was, that was pretty crazy. Like it takes a lot of courage to really get in there and try to be like, Oh, everybody's going to die. That's a gang member, or, you know? Cause they get, they get, uh, they get sought after. That, that was that Calderon guy, right? Uh, one trip. That was on yeah, the show. Yeah. That was, it was a pretty good podcast. Yo, that, yeah, that guy, I've been following that guy for a while. Um, cause he's done a bunch of different dope podcasts. Um, his hero. And I recommend this documentary. Fuck. I can't, I can't remember off the top of my head, the name of the documentary, but it, it was about this, um, this, this police chief that was the police chief in Tijuana and then became the police chief in Juarez. And like the years he was in was really f like fucking shit up and fixing it. And, um, you know, like the crime and murders went down cause he went so fucking hard while well, that's this guy Calderon. That's like his hero. Right. Um, they shot him. The documentary is about him getting shot in Ciudad Juarez. Um, while he, he was crossing the border or some shit, they finally got to him. Um, that, that, that's crazy. I got to check that out. He was talking about that on the podcast too. He mentioned uh, that, that same chief and how he got his legs taken away even, but he still like was still fighting for, you know, what was right after that. And he, he found it to be, yeah, yo, he made a hero out of him. Yo, you just, I, I just got an idea for a video. I got to write it down. He's going to win an award for titanium scrotum that police chief because they're trying to whack him. He's going against the cartels and shit. And he know he's getting all kinds of death threats and shit. They're fucking with his family. Like any like think about it, like fucking multiple cartels trying to kill you and shit with all their money and he still didn't give a fuck. Like defiant even after he, he's he's doing an interview in a wheelchair after they fucking almost kill him and shit. And he can't even walk and he's like, fuck him. They didn't get me. Now I'm going to go harder. So now even though he can't be a, like, a police officer out on the streets, he's running for like politics and the mayor and shit. He's like, I'm going to get him this way now. But yeah, uh, I'll find out the name of the documentary here in a minute. I'll post it up. Yeah, there. yeah. Send it, send it to me or post it. I'll check it out for sure. I'll reach out and uh, have him set up a wallet. We'll send him uh, titanium scrotum. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Patricio. So you brought up a several different topics, but um, the first thing I wanted to 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 address is I like what you said before around Stoners Club and like it being a place where we could sort of model and talk about more controversial topics or different topics and um, and I know I haven't been around as much, but I'm glad we're doing it and I always love when that sort of happens organically and I think it's an important. Um, thing to interweave within within sort of our conversations because um, I think it helps remember and remind us that you know while we love solving our blockchain problems and Cardano problems like the goal is as you said um, solving bigger problems too and I think we can we can maybe come up with small solutions you know maybe or at least remind us that those are solutions maybe we should be focusing on um, but so that was the first point that you made that I thought was a good reminder. Um, Let me know. say something to that real yeah, yeah, quick, uh, Patrick, before you get to your next uh, point. Um, and, and who's my question for, for not just the, not just this Twitter space, but uh, the whole Cardano space and crypto and just the world is um, who, who's going to make those changes if not us? Like this is our generation. Like we're we're the ones in charge right here. You seen the thing today? All these senators have got one foot in the grave. They don't even know what the fuck that is going on. You know what I mean? It, it's it's gonna fall on our shoulders. It already is. We're already feeling like the pressure of the responsibility. And um, you know, it, the vassal hard fork was named um after this dude, right? Who uh, I, I'll never forget this this fucking quote who, who, when. They were talking about, Uncle Charlie was talking about him, and he was talking about planting seeds for trees that we are not going to enjoy the shade of. They're for our kids. They're for your kids running around in the background um, when we're on the fucking space and shit. You know what I mean? That's who it's for. So it ain't even about us no more. And if you think about it, that's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful responsibility to have. Um, 
because I we got, who, like we're in charge of this shit. We're in charge of making these changes. So if not us now, then who win? I mean, it's what it's what that's why I love the why not. I mean, it's the same thing. I think, um, and it's the hardest thing to do, right? And and I think um, I'm gonna see if I can sort of like tie this back to to what you were talking about because I I I don't know I always find this kind of stuff related, but you know it's with that confidence like to go with that intuition or try that new thing or try that new way and and it was a bit like we were talking about the other night um oh god I'm, I'm i'm regretting bringing this up already but um but people are like people are all up in weird arms around the the, the voting thing and drip drops or whatever and i'm like you know i like i posted something that that experience to me was really meaningful because i truly think it was a representation of sort of this you know you know small step forward of how we sort of collect our voices and votes and um knowing of how it's done and 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 that sort of progress that we're making as a community here is i think a sort of representation of the question you're asking around like why is it people are leaving and why is it why is it where where like where what does it take to try that new way right and and any of those small steps that 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 get there was get there i think are meaningful not that they can't be improved or you can't do things better and there's plenty of things to mess up but like you know it just feels like we forget how hard it is to do stuff right or we've forgotten how hard it is to do stuff because it's fucking hard to like get things done um but but there's a lot there's a lot better ways to do things these days and i think that's the thing that that we need to show and take control of is is I think people forget how powerful doing something new is and 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 I think you know that risk that you have to take is difficult because you get the haters and you get you get the people that you know and you feel you know it's easier to go do the old way and be like oh, I'm fucking gotta do that shit you know whatever it's easy to fall back there and you know, part part of what I think is cool about the Stoners Club is I feel like a lot of people, myself included, you know, have taken a lot of you know life lessons or personal lessons or like the times we have these conversations, and like you know, in a small way, it helps towards my my own confidence or my own way of expressing you know these things or talking to you or being persuasive or 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 being funny or whatever. I mean, being musical, right? I mean, I fucking wrote thir- like almost fucking twenty five parody songs mostly about cardano like that's weird as shit but it's funny and like it's it's because these these you know i'm in a new place and i'm in a new place partly because of being here because you know you guys did something new and started a new conversation and and sort of like really bring this all back home in a very weird way you know the risk that these people are taking to come here i think is probably mostly driven by my guess is there's not much uh, like the economy's not doing well. You know that's going to hit places that we're maybe relying on imports or other or the other economies going, and then you combine that with 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 sort of um, a different presidency. I think it's less sort of parental of like, but more if you're going to take a risk of potentially dying on, uh, to go to a new place in a new country and taking leaving your home, like there's that's such a huge thing to do and like to, to like take the ultimate new path and to risk sort of your future. Like, I'm not sure it's ever as simple as we're making it out to be in Biden and like all the shit that we're doing. It's like, eh, I don't know. Like you got to be in a weird spot to kind of, you know, go make that journey. Um, but what that journey's for is to like get you in a better place to then give you that confidence in, to start a new or start a new way or start a new thing. And, um, and, and, and like, to answer your last question it can't be through violence right now it's hard to like put yourself in the philippine shoes or the other or or the guy in under like shoes as well because like if your country is full of violence like sometimes you only have one way to get out of it but then you gotta like switch like once you've gotten out of it to a different mentality because that doesn't last like short term and i think that's that that idea to kind of make this all full circle us being able to talk about these things in a way that's respectful and but like productive but also challenging and like giving ourselves like a new way to do stuff is important and um so you can't but we can't do that through that yelling and violence so hopefully that caught me up to everything you're talking about and had a 
thread through the similarities we're all going through, but in different orders of magnitude, and those mean different tools. So, for yeah, sure, are... for sure, um, you sparked up a thought. Um, as I'm I'm watching the video right now and fucking the news of the migrants crossing the thing, and I'm I'm trying to think of it from both sides, right? Like, and I, I kind of have to because you know. I'm Mexican American, so I, I, see, <laughs> I see both sides. You know, I see both sides. I'm American as well. I don't want my country to go to shit either. You know, um, but at the same time, I, I, I gotta communicate with those that might not be aware that, um, I don't know if Mexico is considered a third world country like some of the Central or South American countries, but um, I, I want you guys to know that. It's a different type of broke than the broke over here. Like over here, um, we think being broke is like, like you know, nah, I, I got to stop going to Starbucks and shit. I'm broke right now, you know, or like that's our broke, right? Like our broke is like, fuck, oh, damn, I got to get, so I'm going to have to get a loan because I'm doing bad. You know, that's our broke. Our broke is different than Mexico broke. When I've been in Mexico and I've been in Mexico a lot, I, I got to explain to you, it's really like, how are we going to eat? My my grandmother was a prostitute. I, I don't share that a lot. I'm, I mean, it's not something you just go around sharing, but my, my grandmother was a prostitute in Tijuana. Is it, okay if I, is it okay if I bring that up randomly when I'm really hammered? Uh, no, don't. don't okay, um, I won't. Bring it I won't. Up. I, I'll take it disrespectful and I'll block you because it's really – it's a touchy subject for me because it tells me how far, like in a few generations, um, we've come. And when I see my grandma these days, I, I'm like, yo, I, I don't know how much and you had a sacrifice to even get us the fuck over here, um, to be all right. But, um, like it's a different type of broke. I, I, I went to go visit my family in Veracruz one summer. And there was a, it's like the house was like a fucking, had a tin roof, like in the middle of the fucking jungle. And there was a, there was a storm. And, you know, when there's a storm out here in LA, there's a, it's kind of scary, but it's not that scary. It's like, yo, we're right here in civilization and shit. Over there, each fucking raindrop that was bouncing off the fucking tin roof and every gust of wind was like, yo, we might die right now. <laughs> like, I think we're going to die. Like, I don't know if we're going to, I didn't even sleep that night. I was like, yo, we, we might not even make it through the night and shit. And then the next day it was like the whole fucking neighborhood. I don't know if it was a hurricane or what, but um, it was like awful. Everyone looked sad. Everyone's trying to recover. Cause there's no, mo there's no insurance and no money. Like, to fix your house after nothing you gotta start from scratch bro you, it's like yo it's a different type of broke um I, I i was when i was a kid i used to visit the tijuana prison because my stepfather was there um and the, even in there it's like the, the as the brokest of the broke were in their cells one of my uncles who got arrested with my stepfather was in there as well and he was he didn't have money like my stepdad did. My stepdad had money because my mom was out here working a job and sending it to him so he could be all right. So he had a cool little room, still a cell, but in that like Mexican prisons are different. But anyways, as I'm mingling with the other fucking kids and shit in, in, in the prison playing soccer in the fucking little yard or whatever, I'm 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 starting to realize like, yo, this is a different type of broke. Like if I pull out a fucking candy and eat it, they're looking at me like, yo, did you just eat a candy? Like, nothing? Like, we're out here fucking selling candies and shit to try to, like, our parents are forcing us to sell candies, like, in the fucking borderline and shit. I don't know if you guys ever been on the border, but, like, they're, they're looking at me like I was crazy. They were playing video games, and they were paying a rent the Nintendo that was there in the yard for them to play, and I told one of them, oh, I have one of these at home because I had a Nintendo motherfucker was like oh you're rich i'm like nah like in america a lot of kids have nintendos like my neighbor has one and my like my friend has one and to them it was like yo you have a nintendo it's like a different type of broke bro bro man hey uh big joe that, i just want to say that's resonating so much and, and it really like man it makes me like uh i want to just encourage people to get out there and travel because 
when you're dealing in those situations, at least for me, like you, it, it's a totally a different kind of broke. And like, it almost feels embarrassing when like, well, for me, if I even pull out fuck, like a $10 bill, you know, like, and, and it's sad that it has to get to that point. Like, I don't know. But I, yeah. to- I totally agree with yeah, everything no, you're saying. You. I feel you, bro. And man. that's why you're seeing people, you know, rushing over the water right there. That's why, just because there's no, there's no limit to, you know, uh, like what somebody would do, to, you know, just to have that opportunity or to give that opportunity for generations to come. There's really no limit. And that's what they're saying. I, I, think, I think any human being can understand this, right? Just listen to this phrase real quick. It's a chance at a better life for you and your family. How many rivers are you going to cross for that? Yo, I'm a, I got to hit it's the a tough, now. It's a tough, <laughs> it's a tough, it's a tough balance, right? And I think, um, Maybe to maybe like open it up for maybe some easy, I don't know, ways it like, so there's that part of it too. And then I think the idea is to maybe go back to perhaps like the, the authoritarian the dictator murderer. Um, not that, not that necessarily you need to become like a thug to like, in the sort of truest sense of that's, you know, use it, you know, like whether you have to use like more military force or something like to your, to the same point of the danger in other in like certain parts of the world is like much more real right and like daily and um and like you can't just be like well we're gonna policy make our way out of this right like it doesn't exactly work that way um but but at the same time you know once you get to like a a steady a steady state like you then have to switch to a more like sustainable governance right and and you can kind of analogize that to Cardano, well, fucking, blow, you know, Bitcoin or any of this shit, like everything we're doing, right? With this sort of really crazy volatile beginning, which like has all this sort of ups and downs, but it gets like people interested and it gets like money involved, which which sort of stays in the system kind of like, even if it moves to other blockchains and things. But like after a while, you know, you can't live like that and you can't like, you can't like sustain or grow like that. So you have to like smooth it out and like get better ways for governance and expectations and like a country, like it's the, like the organism, like that's sort of the, the evolution of any thing, right? Any sort of system um, in a way. And I think that's, that's an interesting sort of analogy for like, well, like what means, means to the end, but like, what's the order? Sorry, go ahead, Kyle. Oh, I didn't mean to hit anything sorry guys oh anyway um so like uh but somebody made a point one time of of um like uh i think it's like you know qatar or saudi arabia or something and like how everything's sort of you know everything's like tracked right everything's like very like organized and like controlled um but they were like you know, if you're living in a in a much more like you know tumultuous region of the world with, with surrounded by people that don't like you, and you know there's a lot of chance and risk for like how do you make a stable place for people to like do business and like raise families and like get shit done, and like you know if that's the best option given the circumstances, like why wouldn't you do that? Like to us, maybe it seems foreign, but like in the make the in the make the sense, but you know, in the same way of it, like you're talking about, it's a different kind of broke. It's like, well, it's a different kind of risk to like run a country when you're, you know, have very much more like the volatile, like, like a surrounding area that's, you know, the same as like driving to a state over, right? I mean, that's a very different kind of risk calculation for the safety and security of your, your home. Yo, someone else grab the fucking mic. I ain't trying to be a preacher all night, talking only my thoughts and ideas and feelings. I want to hear some of yours as well. Even if you're down there as a listener, you know, um, opinions are like assholes, right? And you're all one. I mean, however the saying goes. (laughs) The 24-hour thing stopped quick. What happened there? You're in it still. This is part of it. It's it's just... (laughs) 
I just met um fuck. What'd you take <laughs> what'd you get it dinked for? Off spaces. What did they nab you for? Wait, what happened? My bad, I didn't hear you. I heard you got you got like suspended for a day or two or something like that or kicked off. Yeah, fucking because I'm Mexican. <laughs> fucking <laughs> You're cooking enchiladas <laughs> and they were like, nah. Like... You get a diff you get a different block message. They're like, We're sorry, like you know, you can't cross the border. It's something terrible and racist. Shows up in broken English. Yeah, I, <laughs> it's I, honestly, I honestly have no idea why the fuck my shit got blocked. I have no fucking yeah. no clue. They I do fucking wild shit. It had right? to be it had to be like some video, right? It had to be like media related. I mean possibly wasn't it soon after you started sharing TikTok shit? Yeah, but I share the TikTok shit from the Stoners Club account, not from the Big Joe account. If you go look at my hands, I've never shared one oh. TikTok video from the Big Joe account. So when Nudes brought that up, I was like, yeah, but no. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, um, I, I didn't so, know that. Mm. Yeah, it wasn't that. And then I was thinking maybe I posted like too many dildos and titties and shit when I was in Vegas. But then I was like, yo, they could have just, they could have deleted that tweet or whatever, whatever, you know. No, they'll, but they'll, they like auto, they auto fucking. Yeah, plus for that shit. Twitter has all kinds of titties and balls and dick fucking all over Twitter. So I'm like, it probably wasn't that. Well, what about, they do is they like close. Well, right, but. well Mitch Ray uh, got dinked for March Madness. Uh, it was on in the background and the thing picked up like, you know, perfectly verbatim, you know, all the words or tones or whatever that, that they throw it out. So, it, it, again, it could be anything, really. I honestly, well, I really don't give a fuck, to be honest. Like, the whole time, I was playing, po- when I found out my shit got um, fucking deleted or whatever, I was whipping Willie Boy's ass on the poker table in the Discord and asked him how worried I was you, or whoever was in that room playing poker. They are like, hey, your shit got deleted. I was like, man, I don't give a fuck. I'm playing poker right now. Like, wh- Oh, what? that was the night I got the junkie from you. Yeah, I'm I'm happy to announce that I got my junkie back, even though Willie Boy has, hasn't sent it. But um, fucking, that was like two days ago. Even Shaw Dog's junk ass already sent me my Ada Ninja and the other little NFT I won from him. Yo, I've had a good week. I won the Voodoo Brigada giveaway. Nudes, nudes is like my only competition on that shit. To be honest with you guys, I won a hundred Ada from Voodoo Brigada. When they post, if you guys see me retweet, when they fucking post where the little voodoo glasses and shit are moving around, all you got to do is screenshot that shit when it's on there, and you fucking qualify to win. Nudes got it. Nudes gets it, like, in fucking a minute. I don't know how he does it, but it takes me, like, fucking five minutes at least just trying to screenshot, like, fucking a hundred times, but you guys know I'm a fucking voodoo brigada fan, so I don't give a fuck. And I won the first one. Um... Fucking and they they're sending me a hundred ADA, so uh that's good. That's good. The next one is gonna be two hundred ADA, I think. And then the I forgot how the tier goes, but then they're gonna have a grand finale one at uh at the end of at the end of the year. They're gonna have a grand finale one for like five hundred ADA. Or, I don't want to misquote because I'm high and I haven't read it. I don't really do it for the ADA. I like the ADA. Don't get me wrong, but it's just fun. So when you see me retweet that shit, do it. Um, and you'll have a chance at winning some shit. Plus, you get to spread the word about a dope ass project and shit. And um, uh, fucking um, what do you call it? What do you call it? Um, what do these young kids say? Uh, fill my bags or what do they say? Yeah, I was gonna say shilling. <laughs> nah, slaps. Um, what, what was that? Nothing. I'm like, I'm just saying shit. I'm trying to think what these young kids say when you fucking fill my bags. Up. Pump it. Yeah, pump my bags. Uh, yeah, pump you can pump my bags because I have a lot of voodoo's and shit. So, pump my bags. You know what I mean? How many? Are your finger? Are your are your is your hand and fingers okay? There's a lot of snapping. Sorry. Uh, when I when I can't think of something, that's my. Oh, I didn't my even God. know I was doing it. It's like my natural. Like you know when I'm trying to think of a word. What are you gonna do? I'm a human. Fucking. They put these things in the okay. program. How old were you? When you learned that snapping was the sound of your finger hitting your hand and not the the release of the two not fingers, the fingers not the friction of not the hand. fingers themselves yeah I did like now I was thirty seven <laughs> <laughs> I was today years old I 
Oh, I think I was like, <laughs> you know what? You know what's funny? I think I was 37 too. But that was two years ago. I'm fucking dying over here. And my dogs are looking at me like they're jealous because they don't have snapping. gloves to snap their fucking feet. Stop that shit, Joe. <laughs> damn. This right motherfucker's look at me. He's like, <laughs> oh, boy, I, was like, what? I was like, I was like, either I'm so dumb that I'm like everyone would be like, I learned that when I learned to snap, you idiot. Or I was like, well, there's a lot of people like me who don't know. So I'm feeling, I feel okay. Or just never put any thought into it. I really, I never, I really didn't. It was, it was just one of those like, holy shit, okay. Kind of blew my mind for. Yeah, just it's, a that is next changed, level though. It's changed the universe for me. I mean, it's a whole new world. Like last five minutes. <laughs> just it happens like that. If Blake was here, he could play a whole new world by Aladdin. A whole new world. That fucking carpet was a UFO. That was the alien or something. It was like that new movie where the cloud is the UFO and it eats people. Um, I don't know if you guys seen that movie or even know what the fuck I'm talking about. What the fuck is it called? The cloud that eats people? Yeah, the UFO cloud that eats people. Um, It's a big movie. It's a good movie. I seen it. We rented it and shit. Fuck the fucking the fucking. You're not party. talking about the one where like the big robots come down and like. Nah, start, man, I'm talking the about spaceship the comes in like a cloud. No, nah, no, nah, nah, nah. I'm talking. You about... know the dude, man. The dude. You know the fucking the dude, thing, dude, man. The, the black dude who fucking the white people get in the house and they start fucking doing things to him and he get out the director of get out or the producer did this movie about the cloud that oh um what's that motherfucker same killer clowns peel, not peel, a peel, peel peel uh that movie is jordan, so, jordan, so ridiculous jordan <laughs> peel jordan peel sounds right is that his name yeah, yeah sounds, that that dude, true the blocky okay. blocky blocky uh one of them dudes not him the other one his home. Blanca. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't even know what the fuck we're talking about. Okay, okay, boy, okay I know I'll give it to you. Okay. I'll give it to you okay. in normal English. There's this, boy. there's, there's, what's his face? The, the dude's now director, Jordan Peele or whatever. And like, he does scary shit. And like, it's, but it's like supposed to be really fucking good. And he's talking about like his, hold on. Yeah, the guy hasn't missed yet. He he is good because yeah. I like this one as I have, well. I like I, yeah, Get Out and Us. Uh, was it Us? Yeah, Us and Get Out. I liked maybe more, but this I haven't this... seen any of these by the way. Oh, okay, you got it. You got to. They're, they are good. Yeah, I, I've, I've heard. I've heard. Um, it's diff- definitely like a different different style, and it it has a lot like you know it, it, it's kind of hip with the times and shit. It's like definitely a new style of directing. Um, like the the younger generation definitely vibes with it, you know, like the little. Yeah, yeah. I like Jordan. I like Jordan Peele. I thought he. I thought Keaton Peele was fucking super funny and like very very smart. So I'm not. The surprised. movies are smart. The movies are smart. It's like a bunch of puzzle pieces, and you got to put it together. I'm not surprised. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I love smart I'm... movies. Like I love movies that challenge my brain, and I got to rewind it and shit, or try to like put it together. Where you, you know, like a like a good like a good book that's like a fucking murder mystery or some shit, and you're trying to figure it out as you're reading the book, like you the know? Sixth Sense or yeah, something like that. Yeah, you you feel like exactly Willy Boy, exactly. That's the perfect comparison, Willy Boy, to these movies, like the Sixth Sense, like that style, like M Night Shyamalan style. Are you talking about Nope? Yeah, there you go, Nope. That's what I'm talking about, Patrick. That's the cloud UFO. That, Dude, the yeah. fucking cover it looks uh, well. Uh, the reason I thought it was nope is because there's a cloud-looking UFO <laughs> over a city. Yeah, yeah. But um, <laughs> the, uh, Yo, the, the, the I love the... I I like saying shit on purpose so people think I'm crazy. Like I like to give it to you like that. You know what I mean? Um, so because it makes your brain work more too. You know, because if I just give it to you straight oh, and say it normal. Then you're just gonna be it's gonna be boring. But if I give it to you like this, Big Joe style, if when I give it to you Big Joe style, it's a good style, you know? 
So it, it you helps definitely you have your own restaurant, dude. Everything as long as you style. As long as you're snapping your fingers, there's like this Pavlovian thing. I've got to have it, like oh. right, <laughs> like a timekeeper almost. Well, I just um. found out. <laughs> I just found out that that it's from like my finger hitting my hand, not from the fingers. So. Do it slowly, sound. and you, it'll make sense. You'll be like, the, "Oh, the sound of one hand clapping." Yeah. I had a fifth grade teacher named Mr. Kuhn. He was German. Oh, um, fucking! Uh, he he was in the Navy, right? Uh, he's probably one of my favorite teachers of all time. This guy was the funniest, coolest motherfuckers. Um, let me share a quick story with you. Cause I know we have a lot of teachers, um, in the community and shit, uh, you know, fucking Rod and Clay Lips and shit. Let me share a teacher story with you. My, my other teachers would put me like in the corner or send me to the principal's office cause I talk too much and I'll make the whole class laugh. Um, and the teachers will get mad and I'll, that'll fuck up my grades and everything, you know, my fifth grade teacher, Mr. Kuhn would let me jump up. Like if I was the teacher and go to the chalkboard and be like, Joe, you explain it to them. And I'll be like, yeah, yeah, I get it. He's trying to say like that this, you know, back in fucking 1850, this dude, like whack this dude because whatever right and it like instead of making it a negative he turned it into a positive and it made the whole class pay attention and um i'll tell him like yo mr coon thank you for like letting me do that he's like yo you're making my jobs easier the kids are paying attention it's a win-win situation for me like what fucking teacher does that like this dude this dude was fucking awesome and it was like i'll never forget fifth grade al sereno elementary mr coon that that fucking guy, I learned so much in that class um, from, from that dude. He 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 fucking like he opened the world to us. Like you know, like my my world was in my neighborhood, um, like up up to that point, and then or like movies and shit and the radio or whatever. But Mr. Coon was like he he fucking like opened the world to us. Like for for example, like the American Revolution. Instead of just teaching us, like, the American Revolution, he's like, yo, we're, half the class is going to be British and the other half is going to be American. You guys, throw on your red coats. We had, like, some cotton little red coats, and we went outside, and we had a fucking war, like a revolutionary war, and the British class had a fight like the British did and line up and shoot one at a time. The front line had to shoot, and then the, while the ones behind them were reloading and they had to fight the British way and the American ones, the blue coats, which I was on the American side, we had the chance to fucking run around like in the woods and everything like the Patriot and shit. And he was teaching us why America won the revolution and how their, their tactics were, were what won and shit. Um, and when you do fun shit like that, like you'll never forget it. Now I'll never forget how the British fought and how they reloaded their fucking weapons and shit in the Revolutionary War because we had so much fun because he had he bought us a bunch of fucking tissue paper and we filled them up with fucking um with uh, baby powder and we closed them with rubber bands and that's those were our bullets and we went out into the fucking yard and we actually had like a real Revolutionary War and it was like America versus the British. And that shit was just so fun. He had us clean it up after and shit. And, like, you, you know, like, if you're a parent or a teacher or whatever, do shit fun like that, like, for, for the kids. Because they'll never forget that shit. And then they'll pay attention and they'll learn. Um, stop being a stubborn old asshole. Um, you know, because some of you are, like, you're, like, setting your ways and shit. Get, get with the times. Make a TikTok, fucker. Um, like, <laughs> yo, we had, a video's blowing up on TikTok right now. One of our videos, I threw up a little piece where Maxine Waters is fucking getting mad at this last senator who didn't, he wanted to ask his questions and shit. <laughs> that shit was funny as fuck. I couldn't stop laughing. I was all high in the morning watching it. <laughs> <coughs> And, uh, yo, she got pissed off. She got so fucking mad. Like, she fucking, she, she fucking. <laughs> she it was ugly great. Face. Yo, it was great. Like, You're welcome, Lots sir. of ugly faces. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking. 
fucking love it. I love like the fucking um, what would you call that? Like the fucking, I don't know, the white collar way of fucking arguing and shit. Like you know, in the hood, it would have been different. Like, bitch, let me talk. <laughs> <laughs> Passive aggressiveness, man. It is. It's great. You know, I'm fucking dying over here. Um, but yeah, that that shit was dope. Um, I don't know. I don't know how much uh, is going to come out of it, though. <laughs> that guy was just like if what's his name was there himself. He didn't know shit. I don't know. We were looking into it. Every Everyone had dope-ass questions. And all his answers are, I don't know. We're investigating that. We're looking into that. We're, we'll definitely look into that. Well, that's part of uh, what we're looking into right now. Uh, but like, that was all his answers. Like, <laughs> Shows you it's a runaround. That's it. That's it exactly. Uh, can we have your word, sir, that uh, if you find out the government, uh, that fucking SBF has a moment in the government helping them out and shit, can we count on you to let us know? He said, of course. <laughs> <laughs> My guy said, of course. <laughs> People think crypto's the scam, right? We are so fucked. Oh man, this weed is I've been good. I've been traveling today. What's the general <laughs> consensus of Congress? Do we have any yeah, allies? Why are we, why are we fucked? You know, just all like anti, like totally fucked. I got to go back and catch up. And I would have liked to seen what that guy had to say. I I, I didn't go back and check, but. Sounded like he wanted to say something she didn't want to hear. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. You should take I, a look I, at the clip. I really, I don't understand the the rules of the hearings, but there is some type of miscommunication because she she was like, I. It looked like after looking at it a few <laughs> times, it looked like she just wanted to say the last thing she had to say, and then was still gonna maybe pass on the mic after. Maybe not. I don't know. But he thought like he wasn't gonna get a chance to ask his question, so he's interrupting her like, "Yo, yo, Maxine, yo, Maxine, fuck, man, let me ask my questions. I haven't even asked my questions and shit." And she got mad, right? She's like, "You know what? You can have your five minutes." Like she checked herself real quick. She's like, "Damn, I can't really trip on him." So he is kind of right, but let me make myself not look so wrong real quick. <laughs> and you know what? Yes, go ahead, sir. Have your five minutes. Bam, he did his thing. His, I, honestly, his questions, I don't even remember what the fuck he asked. It wasn't too impactful. Like, it wasn't the, no, like, you know what I mean? It wasn't. What do you call that one piece of evidence that fucking wins you the trial? The the fucking, what is it? <laughs> the burning bush or what the fuck do they call it? <laughs> the smoking gun. <laughs> yeah. Burning bush. Burning bush. <laughs> <laughs> That's a that's a different kind of trial. That smoking gun set it on fire, man. Yeah, it's a different kind of trial. Yeah, it definitely fucking had no gun smoke at all. This motherfucker didn't even have weed smoke. But I do. Um, do you guys this is the Stoners Club. You're welcome to smoke while you're here. Hit we got lock, stock, and bushes. I'm hitting a pin. I wish I had some of that. I wish I had some herb, but I'm hitting a pin. <laughs> Yo, you got to do what you got to do. Sometimes you just got to be high on life in here. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Enjoy that shit. Enjoy the shit show. Shout out FTX, Stoners Club, the new wave. Um, we're bringing it back. Like, you know, in a project rug pulls and shit, we're bringing FTX back. We're a group of community members who are going to get together and we're going to revive this shit. It's going to start here today in the FTX Stoners Club. Is it FTX Cash? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's FTX yeah, Classic FTX right here. Diamond. We're bringing the Classic. We can have the Cash one. Yeah. Yo, Ooh, to answer FTX uh, Gold. 
Yeah, Sorry, I'm, go ahead. I'm, I'm bullish on the gold one. I just wanted to say Kyle asked about like if there's like any allies or things from that came out. I, I think the only, I mean, it's kind of like the normal shit that you'd expect. Um, one really fun one is always Brad Sherman, if you remember. I think it was from last year when they were doing, it was like around GameStop time, but he was like that fucking guy who was just like, they got doggy coin and hamster coin and mongoose coin and all that. So that dude, of course, made a bunch of new memes uh, for everybody on the internet. I think he called crypto like the <laughs> electronic pet rock. And the, second, <laughs> and the second one is, uh, who's this guy? Tom Emmer. He actually uh, gave a statement that seems to understand the dynamics of uh, what blockchain technology is and what people are building towards. Because he, he cited it as like, uh, these technologies are, are working to prevent precisely the problem here at hand. Uh, and he gave a pretty astute, I think, uh, statement. So if anyone is like maybe more well versed than I expected, it would be that guy. And I pinned them both up at the top. If you want to peep them, awesome. Uh, thank you, DRB. Hell yeah, man. My name is Kyle. I've been here for a while. It I got rhymes. Kyle. It rhymes with. Dicky pile, dick longer than the Nile. <laughs> Damn, no! And when it's long enough, it'll make you smile. It doesn't fit in the file. It'll shock Sounds you like, like a man in mouth. denial. <clears throat> well, he does have guile, but he makes me smile. <laughs> Repeat. Yo, you fucking guys! You know, you know what I like about you guys. I'm gonna keep it real. The whole, the whole bunch of you, <laughs> as Conor McGregor would say. Shout out to Johnny, the Irishman. Um, you know what I like about you fuckers is that you're fucking smart. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you get the joke. <laughs> Yeah, speaking of smart, does anyone know uh, economic history at all? I do. One another one of my right. favorite teachers, economics class. All right, let me hit you with one. I'm I've been uh, writing my final exam that I'm giving uh, in my class, tomorrow, and I want to ask you one of the questions because it relates to economics and money. All right, a treaty that helped establish the World Bank and International Monetary Fund: A, the New York Agreement; B, the Geneva Convention. C, the Bretton Woods Agreement, or D, the Dresden Coinage Convention? What do you got, Big What's Joe? It? Bretton Man, Woods? That one's hard. That one's hard. What do you um, got, Big Joe? I'm leaning towards... Can, can you repeat the question, please? You know, like a spelling bee? Can, can you yeah, yeah. repeat the question, please? <laughs> Can you spell it out or use it in a sentence? Yeah. All right. A treaty that helped establish What's the World the Bank and the International Monetary Fund. So you got the New York Agreement, the Geneva Convention... The Bretton Woods Agreement or the Dresden Coinage Convention? So, I'm, okay, so when it's multiple choice like this, you just cancel out, right? So, Bretton Woods was a great singer and shit, but I performed with him here at Al Sereno Park at a lowrider show. I was a rapper and he bought heroin off my uncle. He's a heroin addict, the guy that sings oldies, Bretton Woods. So, I don't think he had anything to do with that shit, so I'm gonna cancel that one out. The second one I'm going to cancel out is the one that I don't even fucking understand. Never heard of it. I don't even understand what you said. Uh, that was the fourth one. So that leads me with two options. The Geneva Convention and the New York one. Now, fucking the New York one, they got the stock exchange and all that. It's all about money. So I, I can see that happening. And the Geneva Convention, I forget if that has something to do with World War II and shit. And then after the war, they came together. And I, for, I forgot exactly how that one came down, but I, I'm leaning towards that shit. So, man, it's going to be A or B for me. Um, and if they both could be wrong, I'm going to go with B, though, because it sounds more famous. All end? right, man. I like that logic. I like that logic. Um, unfortunately, the correct answer is not New York or Geneva, and neither the Dresden Coinage Convention. Uh, Kyle, I think, shouted out the answer is correct. The Bretton Woods Agreement. What the fuck was Bretton Woods doing? <laughs> 
fucking back then. I didn't even know he was alive. What the it's fuck? Tiger Woods is great, 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 yeah. great grandpa. That also, that also it, helped. As much as I like Kyle, that was the gold rush that screamed that out. <laughs> Yeah, that was the. Oh, was it? Yeah, Sorry. no, I've been chilling on mute. I didn't say shit. I didn't know what okay. the fuck that was. I thought it was off. Off. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw it at the bottom of my screen. Yeah, I must have been the gold rush because Brenton Woods yeah. also helped us. I was like, damn, he was a rapper and his uncle fucking bought heroin from him. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, the, the Brenton Woods also helped uh, create like the global economic standard of using the. Um, the U.S. dollar as the standard, as well as gold, and then that particular meeting is like what um, cre- helped create the the World Bank and International Monetary Fund after after World War Two. It was like a whole economic kind of I really. Known, of I, July of 1944, these guys came together and decided they were going to learn how to run the world, and this is what they came up with. And you know, you can read the diary diary of an economic hitman where economists are talking about the plans that were made to destroy South America, basically, you know what I mean? Like to keep these, to keep the rest of the world under their thumb, you know, uh, with agreements that they couldn't fulfill and loans that they couldn't repay. You know what I mean? Like, uh, talking them into these bad ideas. Right. (laughs) And now you've got what you, we were just talking about earlier. The rest of the world is a, is like, it gets, it gets a little Uh, fucked up in some places. Right. And so now we're back to we've gone full circle back to yeah, what caused goes, the World Bank and the IMF. Yeah, it goes it goes it goes back to the to the uh, migrant question because like so so like end of World War Two it's like World War One is kind of like the end of colonialism and then there's like you know a bunch of infighting some new powers come up World War Two happens and then this shit is like is like what continued the major world powers but did it so in like in like economic terms in a way right so like the dependencies. And uh, ruling over foreign entities like in South America and Africa and stuff like that, right? You couldn't just like go there and fucking control them anymore. So, so this whole thing created like a, a global institution where it's like, okay, now we have these like economic relationships, right? So we're gonna give you these things, and they and they came up with structural adjustment funds where where they they'll give you a bailout basically, right? Oh, your economy sucks because we reaped and pillaged it for centuries. We'll give you a bailout. But we have we get to decide what the money's used for, and also to the like terms of repayment, basically, right? So they're like economically strapped, and now they're fucking depending on Uncle Sam or the World Bank or the IMF, you know, this big global group kind of thing, and uh, it like it it maintained the the kind of imbalances between. Uh, nation states like in South America and North America, for example, and and that kind of history is like, um, you know, is 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 largely influential about why things like migrant caravans exist and fucking people's houses are just a shack in the jungle. Like it's it's all connected in a way for sure. Um, but Patrick's got the hand up, so I'm gonna throw it over to him. Uh, excellent point. Uh, the the last point kind of tying back. So um, well well done. Um, I wanted to maybe pose an idea and I don't know if, if this is like a, a good thought or a totally stoner thought, but I'm going to pose it anyway. Wait, what's the difference? Um, well, sometimes they're both. Yeah, yeah, no, there's, there's, there's a both. difference, man. Come on. There can be <laughs> and, sometimes, <laughs> and sometimes they're not good. So, you know, they're both stoner thoughts though. So I wonder, or my thought being, like if we sort of think about the broad historical arc of warfare, if this Bretton Woods Agreement is sort of the transition from physical warfare to sort of information warfare, right? Like using, sort of, you know, using to going beyond sort of physical violence as like how to exert power in, in sort of the systemic way right i guess like in sort of modern warfare so to speak um like that that that's that's they tokenized and... they tokenized warfare by making it economic they tokenized yeah, yeah, and fractionalized I mean. <laughs> they yes, did they exactly. did what we're doing yeah to yeah, warfare yeah, yeah they so, revolutionized so like, warfare like the, and like, economic because we're like the guerrilla warfare of, of data right so like if you think so like we're, it's this is the response to it's like so so centralization comes from um Comes, you know, it, it's going to happen, but it will happen, you know, where where uh, where friction is less, 
right? So, so if you start, you know, if consolidating power is too costly or difficult, as we saw in World War One, two, it's like, well, fuck, like, what's a better way to, an easier way to exert and maintain power and influence? And it's much, you know, it's much better to do that through information, like the cost and like energy <laughs> required to to do that is, you know, way better. Like way, like it's just way more efficient. It's well, interesting it's, sort it's, of it's, framing. It's more, it's more necessary now because we didn't have this before. We didn't have this connectivity, and now we do. And yeah. and it's a measure of control. And so, if you China, China's really you know has done the really good at kind of like isolating, you know, their environment. Like you know, we we have a developer who was in China. He, he finished school in China and got and. Uh, it was just challenging. We had to we had to do challenging things to work with them, and so it's just weird how, you know, it's not. It's not. I don't think it's so much as like, uh, um, cheap and money things. It is like a necessity because you know, like, a good idea is really powerful and it can travel really, really, really far. And, and the only way to, I mean, I don't even know if there's a way to stop it, but you know, there's places well, that haven't had revolutions that very well may, you know, in time. Well, no, what you're, what you're saying is super important because um, sort of this coincides with the sort of rise in, in information technology, right? So this is pre-internet, obviously, but it was the rise in, you know, wires and telephones and, um, like faster communication between places, which like increase frequency and transactions, and 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 that that becomes a new pipeline for information, and and that's that's so that so these ideas become more powerful because they're they spread faster. And, and some ass, internet some, go from there. Some asshole invented the fucking transistor. Right. You know, there's a um. I think kind of recently, uh, like a lot of Bitcoin maxis and and and, and whatnot, um, have been talking about IMF, like in 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 this whole history. So if you're ever interested to it, there's a pretty good thread by uh, this dude Alex uh, Gladstein, and uh, he he's like a Bitcoiner. Um, he writes for Bitcoin Magazine, but I mean they're they're into it now because it's like the Bitcoin standard solves all of this kind of thing, and I don't necessarily agree with that. I think. Yeah. He's, but more broadly speaking, like I think you know, blockchains and things like Cardano and other other platforms, you know, um, kind of as a whole, uh, definitely create a new alternative to to that history for sure. Um, but it's a pretty good thread, and he like breaks it down. It's from like a longer essay, but you can just read it in like a few tweets if you're uh, if you're curious. Um, maybe Gold Rush, check it out. Gold Rush, what's the deal behind your name? Why are are you Bretton Woods? Did you? Did you fucking make this like weird gold standard after World War Two? What's what's the deal? You doxing me, bro? Go to yeah, the man. Pools. You're the guy. We're gonna mint you into an NFT. Twinkle tits, we'll call you. Twinkle tits. You better watch out. Nudes mints everything, man. Yeah. No right. shit. I got I got nude dust all over my wallet, man. He blasted the hell out. <laughs> I was like, "What? What is Yo. this?" Uh, now I'm reading all, like, you know, the poems of like, Sappho's, and I'm just like, "Wow, man! I'm getting educated looking at my wall." I'm just like, "Oh, let's read the, let's read another verse today." What, what's <laughs> man? Nude. Nude. I feel more literate for knowing you, nudes. Uh, thank you very much. And I was born illiterate, which which is so you've performed a miracle. Fuck yeah! I was born illiterate too, but then I learned. <laughs> I'm Yo, nudes, nudes, oh, yeah. nudes minted my balls. He minted my balls. They're fucking famous now. It's come out on TikTok videos and shit. Um, I was gonna say something else, but I forgot. In the tradition of the Stoners Club, a great thought. Just let it go, and we'll come back to you. Circle back around again for sure. Yeah, Quit. the it, it's the alien. It's the alien. Cl- cloud ufo thing is the thought and it's swimming nope. around my brain right now and eventually it's going to connect back to uh whatever controls my mouth to fucking share it with you guys patrick you're gonna say something though i just said nope yeah nope
Because you said the UFO Club. That's the movie, remember? Oh, yeah. Nope, I do. Nope. <laughs> so, I, can't decide. Uh, I can't decide if we go serious or funny. Yeah, funny well, you gotta... Right, balance, oh. right, right, Patrick? Balance the fucking yin and the yang and the left nut and the right nut so you can walk straight. Um... <laughs> So you gotta go back and forth. All right, all right. I got an idea. Uh, so it, it, maybe I might have already said this once when I was drunk. I don't know. But w- what if we did a, a chat? Uh, what's it called? GPT or G? Whatever the the, the software, you know, the AI software. It, it, like, let it write a rap battle, and then you gotta read. You gotta fucking recite your rap. Yeah, battle yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do a chat years. GPT. Yeah, let's think of different shit. We got let's divide up into teams. All right, right. <laughs> what? We're, we're fucking having a fucking chill Fuck yeah, we're doing a chat GPT rap battle. So, so you, let the, you, let the AI, you let the AI write it for you. You tell it's it hilarious. what to write. You throw in the names of whoever you wanted to talk shit about and whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and then... <laughs> and, but you have, to actually re- you have to actually perform it. Yeah. You gotta read it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, give us give us a fucking example. All right, all right. Well, okay, yeah, we'll do a test run. We'll do one as a team. We'll do one as a team, guys. Uh, we'll, we'll team up. A little team building. Does anybody else want to come up? Do we got room for more speakers? <laughs> I, I, have, I have not used this software. I've just heard so many people oh, talking about it. I figure you all have. Fucking wicked. My, my <laughs> it's fucking Yo, I was cool. going to ask you about that earlier news. I had I had it make me write unique Ninja Turtle episodes, man. It was fucking the little, the little mice were stealing pizza and you're, shit. <laughs> Kyle, Kyle, you're a Ninja Turtle like us too. You're oh, like, dude, I'm a fucking nut, dude, dude. That's like, dude, if if like if like I don't know, like you know, like the little kids' fantasy, I I like want to buy the Ninja Turtle franchise. Okay, I'm gonna test you then. Right. Can I test you? Can I test yep. your Ninja Turtle knowledge? Yeah, sure. Cause like this is we take this shit serious in the Stoners Club because me right. dudes we're all Ninja okay. Turtles. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh. You see my Telegram, dude? I rock fucking with Leonardo on Telegram. This this account used to I used to be fucking Leonardo for fucking. Okay. Wild. Okay. Yeah. Re- recite to me the second verse in the smash hit by Vanilla Ice. Ninja oh, I don't rap. know the verses, but it's no. the fucking. <laughs> The go ninja go, like yeah, man. You know, what I'm saying? don't get me wrong. Ninja turtle too, yeah. What? I mean, like, I, I don't. I mean, like. Okay, okay. I'll give you something. That was to me. That was that was. Too yeah, much. that's that's a, that's that's a little too, too much. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Too much, man. Come You're right. Okay, 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 okay. Easier, something easier, something easier. No, I'm, I'm something. Gonna, I'm gonna test your ninja turtle. You know where your bracket is at. Your you tax- tell me. Hit me with it. Go. Hit me with it. Um. What do you want to know? Um anchovies. Oh my nope. bad. Go ahead. No, no, no. Um The Shredder. No, oh, okay, my bad. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go. Think of something good. In the original. <laughs> yes. When did Shredder when, when, <laughs> when, when, <laughs> what you got? In, in the very first, the very first. When did Shredder die? Yo, I didn't hear nothing. All I heard was the original at the end. Can you repeat the question, please? Oh, yeah, no. I, it, it just in the, in the very first, where they ever appeared, when did he die? Or how did he die? Wait, who died? Shredder. In the first movie? No, the very first. Very first Turtles ever came on the scene, bro. In the cartoon, then? You know, the comic book? Oh, no. The comic book? The comic book? Yeah. Yeah. That shit was like in 1972 in Japan or some shit. I <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. You, you, dude, that's where it got raw, dude. That's what no, got me. Man. You fucking Did he get chewed beer. up by like some kind of grinder thing? <laughs> no. Kyle, no. you drink beer with King of the Hill, huh? Yeah. I heard it right now. I heard yeah. it. I know I heard it. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Come on, man. He went over the edge with an aid, boy. Yeah, he died. Shredder died, I think, in the first issue. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, <laughs> <laughs> says chat GPT. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Uh, you know, they all have red bandanas, man. You don't know that? That were so dope, man. Like, so, like, the, the original Nintendo game, the cover where they all had red bandanas, that was like a tribute back to like the original series. Damn, the Nintendo game was so awesome. The first that. one that was hard as fuck, man. That one, the Michael oh, Jackson one, the fucking. Oh. Did you guys see that Michael Jackson shit going around? Damn, he has his own fucking virus now. What happened? No, 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 no. It's like a, it's like a funny scam. It's a cat. It, he's like, hold on, let me read it. And you got to see it, man. I hold on, I got to figure out a way to share it. Hold on. <laughs> <Tweet> <laughs> that like shit. Hold on. Hold on. Yo, Patrick, do you have a rap? Not yet. I'm trying to think of what it's going to be about. This is oh that's what I was gonna ask. The you. important the important part of GPT three is the planning. I just what wrote write a rap about and then I gave it a topic. I got one. You ready? Hit do a it. Turtle rap. No, yeah. What, do a new vanilla ice ninja turtle rap. I already you, got. It. Ready? Yo, you, it's your boy Sisty here, ready to spit some fire. Never fear. I'm gonna take you on a journey with the teenage mutant ninja turtles building on Cardano. It's a beautiful fusion. Turtles, turtles, building on Cardano, a decentralized platform that can handle all their crypto. With smart contracts and secure transactions, the turtles can focus on fighting crime. No distractions. Donatello's the brains of the operation, building on Cardano. He creates a new foundation. Michelangelo's creative, always thinking outside the box. With Cardano, he can let his imagination run wild and unlock. Cardano is the perfect platform for the turtles to build on. With a scalability and low transaction fees, they can go the distance and never be gone. Raphael and Leonardo are on the front lines with Cardano by their side. They can handle any challenges and crimes. Turtles, turtles building on Cardano, a decentralized platform that can handle all their crypto with smart contracts and secure transactions. The turtles can focus on fighting crime. No distractions. <laughs> did, right. wait, did, wait, did you write that? Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Chat, Chat GPD did it. It's crazy as fuck. Okay, so no, like, if y'all turtle fans, okay, so they were aliens original too. So like, okay, so get this shit, news. Just say, write me a unique Ninja Turtle episode, and then you can keep hitting retry, and it'll write you whole new unique episodes. So like, re like, hey, hey, like, but, but, but the, don't the delete mice, that. Man, Save it that. makes the mice tricky, man. See if the mice eat the pizza again. The, my, and mine, the mice snuck and stole the pizza, man. <laughs> like little mice, <clears throat> yo, that's just crazy to me, nudes. Do it, do it, nudes. It read it. Trust it has me, all man. this fucking information and shit. Well, no, it, it figures shit out. Like it won't, it won't do anything about people. It doesn't know current events. I think the last time it was trained, uh, uh, I caught last, uh, like maybe twenty twenty one. Last said, um, but uh, yeah, it, it's wild. Like you can ask it to do all kinds of shit. You could ask it to write essays on something. You could ask it how to respond to certain text messages or tweets. Um, you you can ask it to, yeah, I think it even output code. Quinn asked it to write a really stupid program. I'm gonna fucking ask it for a blowjob, nudes. I had a question. Um, I I want to ask before I forget, real quick. Uh, fucking the 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 fucking this is like uh, what what the fuck is this AI called? Like text to text. To, uh, it is, uh, on chat. A- Dot dot. Oh, okay, okay, that's what I'm thinking about. You guys are fixing my brain. Thank you. Yeah. Um, fucking. So there's the there's the text to picture AI, right? And then there's the text to video one. So I was trying to go to these three different ones that supposedly do that shit, but it's like a fucking it's like a fucking uh, NFT project. Like all I got to was like a white paper. But I'm like, how do I get to use it? Like you're using what you're using now, nudes. Yeah, go to go to chat.openai.com. You gotta sign in, get an account. Um, Wait, that one does the, the video ones as well? Oh, the video. Yeah, I'm talking about the video ones. There's like three different ones, and I would have no, one. I'm playing with it. You guys wanna ask a question? Because nudes, where'd you go, man? Or or can y'all I'm hear me? Here. Yeah, oh, man, you... I'm here. I, I've had I've had this script ready to go, but then Big Joe had to ask a question. Oh, uh, and real quick, uh, Joe, on that question, yeah, as Kyle mentioned, chat.openai.com is the um, the chat one, right? So we'll give you text, 
And then the um, images and stuff like that, there's like Dolly and Mid Journey are the two major um, imaging ones. And I'm not really familiar with whatever video options oh. there might be. I'm going to send journey. you the link. Fucking yeah. wicked, dude. Like, we, 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 I'm going to send you the link. Dude, dude we're. Oh, hell yeah. People why, use yeah, it you, together. Paste you, the link. Yeah, yeah, fucking A, man. Mid Journey is wild, dude. So people have been using the chat GBT to generate prompts for mid journey. And it comes out like insane because you're using an AI bot to, to tell something else to another AI bot. And the like output is like fucking wild. Um, it, was literally, it was literally on my list of things to do the other day. I was like, uh, then I was like yeah, dude, definitely check it out. Do this. That's it. I'm so glad that that's that works. Dude, it's awesome, man. Yo, and the coding stuff is great, too. I, I had a good thread where it had, like, all these examples of people. Like, they're basically, like, you could build a website and then ask it to, like, update HTML, CMS. I made a I made an NFT um, that has, like, uh, HTML coding inside of it, like the refresh. So every time you, like, open the page or click it, it changes. But it's all poems that the AI itself generated so that... So it's an on-chain NFT that uses AI-generated code in the JSON file, and then the contents of what is displayed is AI-generated content as well. It's pretty wild. All right. I got a Ninja Turtles episode, though, for a while. Okay. Chilling here. Let's do it. Let's do it. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, good. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'll read the script. It's not that long. Um, all right. <laughs> Wait, <I'll> <laughs> How long is not that long? No, I mean, some of these things can get fucking really lengthy. But anyways, the title of this uh, episode is called The Time Traveling Ninja Turtles. And the scene is the turtles are in their lair practicing their martial arts skills. And suddenly, a bright light engulfs them and they are transported to a futuristic city. Michelangelo says, whoa, dude, where are we? And Donald Tell says, it looks like we've been transported to the future. Raphael says, but how and why? Leonardo we must be brought here for a reason. Let's explore and see what we can find out. The turtles make their way through the city, taking in the sights and sounds of the future. They come across a group of people being harassed by robotic guards. And Raphael says, hey, you can't just stand here and watch. Let's take out those bots and help these people. The turtles jump into action using their ninja skills to defeat the bots. The people are grateful and tell the turtles that they are rebels fighting against a tyrannical government that uses robots to maintain control. Leonardo says, we must do whatever we can to help these people and stop the government from using robots to oppress the population. The turtles team up with rebels and begin planning their attack on the government's headquarters. Meanwhile, a scientist working for the government has discovered that the turtles are from the past and tells the government leaders. The government leader says, if these turtles are from the past, they could have knowledge and technology that could help us maintain our power. We must capture them and use them to our advantage. The turtles successfully infiltrate the government headquarters and confront the leaders. However, they are outnumbered and outnumbered by the robotic guards. Just as they are about to be overpowered, they are suddenly transported back to their own time. Michelangelo says, whoa, that was intense. I'm glad we're back in our own time. Donatello says, well, we're able to help those people in the future. Raphael says, but we also learned that we have to be careful with the technology that we create. It could be used for good or evil. Leonardo says... We we'll always use our skills and technology for greater good. The future is in our hands. The turtles continue their training, ready for whatever challenges may come their way. Bam, 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 bam. This is give you outlines. Like kids are gonna cheat and use this for school. Like this is gonna be ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. I should take my final I'm writing right now with this thing. I think this is so now, what if you were to uh, feed stock charts into the Dolly thing and then like reverse engineer what you just said and then ask the 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 chat bot to give you good trading strategies based on like how do you make this how do you make this chart go up you know like make <laughs> make price go up and then see what it would do like does it spit out like a a perfect like economic formula for how you change the the you know <laughs> the, this that or the other thing Yeah, I never tried to put in financial data, but I know that it can do computational stuff. So, like, any math problems you put in there, it can do. It can, like, read code and stuff. You could ask it general problems, but it'll also just, like, I mean, it understands huge, wide, like, wide range of inputs. 
I asked it, give me a trading strategy for shorting Bitcoin in a bull run. And it just like gave me a bunch of paragraphs, not recommended to short sell during the bull market, all that stuff. Um, in monitor market trends and shit like that. But if you have specific okay. inputs, like the numbers and stuff like that, um, it could it could probably give you some sort of analysis, I guess. I'm happy to hear that you uh, that you at least uh, broached that topic with it. You know, like <laughs> trying to trying to dig into the the machine and figure out like, can you get, really deliver me like results? Like, you know, can you offer me good advice? So thank you, thank you for at least uh, I haven't I haven't played with it at all. Yeah, man, go check it out. It's fucking awesome. Oh man. Oh. <laughs> okay. You guys want to hear my questions? <laughs> okay, I asked it. I said, "Can you kill someone with a fart?" <laughs> and it said, "While it is theoretically possible to kill someone with a fart." <laughs> I had no idea. It is highly unlikely. And then there's a whole other paragraph, but that's all I wanted to read because I didn't read that much. I just I didn't know it was theor- theoretically possible. Gives the rise of the machines then. Yeah, it's gonna get weird. You guys seen those things about like drones? The like the mini drones? Um there's like some propaganda videos. Hold on, let me see if I can find it. It's a little while ago. Where like these drones are like flying around and like sticking to people's heads and blowing up. Warfare is going to change. It's not just information. It's like anybody well, can... Well, now it's going back to fucking violence, dude. It's going to be like AI fucking killer robots and shit. Oh, no, it's weird. Like, we got... We got a request because, you know, we're doing 3D printing stuff. I don't know if you guys knew that, but one of our guys got a request um, for for to print for us to print 10,000 units. And we looked at it and, and they said they were from like this company that looked like they printed real legit shit. But when we looked at it, I mean, it had fins from like a. Like a mortar case, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's like, what the? Heck? And it, they were going to Ukraine, and I'm like, no, we're not touching that. But yeah, it's like things are, you know, they were using drones to drop mortars. And so, man, and I have nothing but respect for that for those guys. That's what yeah, I would no. do in my neighborhood if I was already if I was already the airplane club that like oh, built this yeah. shit already. Like, me and my boys, we would be like, so how do we strap a motherfucking grenade to this shit? <laughs> yeah, right away. Right the oh, fuck yeah, sure. right away. Somebody's yeah. marching into my motherfucking neighborhood? Yeah, and I happen to have the shit right here to drop, to blow their fucking tanks up? Are you fucking kidding me? Yes, absolutely. Here, I think I found it. Hold on, it's this YouTube video. Let me see if I So find you it. blocked their order? You blocked the order for the shell casings? <laughs> no, 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 man. It's not an order, dude. dude I'm, I'm, I'm running like a decentralized... I'm not, I'm not running. I'm, we're kind of like... There's a group of guys that are coming together that are helping us figure you know, out the, how to... The how other, to, sorry, no, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm sorry. We're not, yeah, no, we're not taking orders like that. It's just, you know, what we're trying to do is create a decentralized initiative and there's things you can and can't do when you're not decentralized yet, you know, and that I, got you, I got you. I heard the other day that you said something about, you know, being able to screen out like uh, parts for 3d printed guns, which, so I understand why you wouldn't want to uh, deliver something well, that looks well, like a mortar shell. I understand it's that. Necessary. It's not necessarily screen out. It's you want to comply in regulation where it goes. Like in California, you definitely can't do that shit. And it's more than a 3d printer operator, but you see what I'm saying? So you, you can well, I mean, buy it's you just a, yeah. You know, so I could technically build a weapon that fires as long as it looks like a cock ring, right? Well, I mean, no. no. So, like, yeah, I mean, you can do that, too, if you want to get around it. But, but if you, I mean, like, 
what we're doing, like the back end's decentralized. So like the front end, yeah, I'm you know, I play by the rules, but the back end and all the smart contracts when it goes you want to go and build something, I have the fuck at it. You see what I'm saying? Somebody on the other side of the world and Ukraine wants to build a front end on it and do whatever they want. You see what I'm saying? It's kind of, it, it's a it's a different means to, to the same end, but it gets us all there. Right? You lay the framework. So that was your intention from the start, right? You, <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. That was, you not, that was never your intention. That was never your intention. What I you get mean? you. I understand. Yeah, yeah, like you got, yeah, I mean, you Who this wrong number, uh, new phone. Uh, no, I mean, you, you understand that you build the back end decentralized so anybody can come and build a, a front end that's competitive. Yes, completely. That's that's okay. that's that's like I love it because it's like this framework that's going to be repeated across all these industries, and then and, and uh, yeah, that's fantastic. Well, it's it's just yeah. I mean, and you at some point you, you can you decentralize, you know, the front end that we're doing, you know, because we don't want to do that either. But that's a process. But as we're doing it, we've got to build, and there needs to be centralization when you're when you're kind of building initially. Yeah, um, of course, it's a it's a process. Um, it's an evolution, right? You gotta like <laughs> you're trying to minimize volatility, so you centralize at the beginning, but then you end and, and then well, that creates all the fun stuff. Oh yeah, and it's really hard to do though too right now too. So yeah, Cardano exactly. is like, well, I mean, yeah, we're not like Emergo's slipping, but we're getting there. They we got a really important pull request waiting to merge. So they they uh, I don't know if you guys know the history, but um SIBA wrote the CSL uh the serialization lib and it, it, it just wasn't ready for to for Plutus V2. Certain things didn't work. Smart contract minting. Um but uh so we couldn't do end in Plutus V2 with CSL so we had to get kind of funky. But hopefully they'll they'll get it where it needs to be and tools are coming. So I would expect more capabilities to be coming online shortly uh, for a lot of projects because it was kind of holding up a lot of projects that at least to our understanding. So that's good. But um, did you guys hear Charles talk last night? On a Twitter space? Yeah. Yeah. I, like half of us in here talked to him. It's fucking me and nudes and I forgot. Who else got to fucking ask him a question? But, but he's wild, man. He goes on these fucking tangents for like. Dude, fucking he, yeah, I mean, the, the, <laughs> the, the, yeah, the, no, but the the hashcraft guy was like really honestly trying to like ask him a question, like what he thought. You know what I'm saying? And like he just like went on and just like totally just rips him a new asshole, and he goes, oh, "I'll read the white paper. I haven't done it yet." It's like, dude, what? <laughs> That's so mean to me. Uh, yeah, it sounds like he's gonna be doing them more often though, so that's good. Everyone will get a chance to ask their questions and shit. I get lucky with Uncle Charlie when he has a space. I, I most of the time I get a chance to be a, a speaker, or when he does his AMAs on YouTube, he loves answering the Stoners Club questions for some reason. I don't know um, if he, it's just because he's a stoner or what, but and I always ask him some wild shit too, like. This last AMA he had, I asked him if he was scared that he was going to get whacked by the Illuminati because of them other three billionaires that got whacked recently. And um, he st he proceeded to fucking give us the history of the fucking Illuminati and fucking all kinds of shit. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's fucking awesome. Yeah. He's like, so secret societies do exist. And so I think he's got that chat chat in his fucking ear. Yeah, you think so? You think, you think, you think he's, oh, yeah, yeah. He, he does know a whole lot of shit. Yeah, like he knows fucking so much shit. I'm like, no fucking way. But he also just maybe that brain. What's up, Quasar? He's tangential. He's good at going with tangents. The fucking Quasinator teaches me a new word every day. 
He's what? Tran- he's, transsexual. He's got, a, he's got a tanning bed in the in the on the ranch. Oh, so fucking he gets all the fucking vitamin D or whatever that he needs. The vitamin D centralization. Absolutely, man. Fuck yeah. He, he's fun to listen to, man. He, he he does know a whole lot. Um I still haven't finished that Lex Friedman thing. That shit's seven hours. <laughs> yeah, it's just long as fuck. You can talk about everything. Fuck it. He'd be cool to blaze it with though, that's why, you know? Like, hey, what do you think about uh Grasshopper relationships and shit. Wow. <laughs> hey, you know, somebody asked him on space, uh, what's uh, uh, something about time management? And you know what he said? He said, learn to read. He did say that shit. He did. I remember that. Yep. I remember that. It's like, fucking read. I don't know how many books. Blah, blah. But he was like, telling somebody to go read a fucking book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no, I mean, learn to read fast. There's a whole bunch of shit in front of you. But yeah, I mean, everybody needs oh, to read. Oh. Oh. Just learn to read okay, fast. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a little a little commercial coming in oh, from chat. chat. Oh, God. God. Can we please kick Quasar or just send a listener just for a minute? Um, how dare you? How, how dare you uh, ask me to whack the Quasinator? Patrick. <laughs> well, did I? Quasinator? I'm not what, 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 what I'm problem not are we trying to solve here? It. This this is the um the catchy folk song that I, that was come up with is come on down to the Stoners Club where you can talk about anything you want. No judgment near, no need to hide. Just come on in and take a seat inside. Donors Club, oh, what a place where you can be yourself and show your face. Just smoke and chat and let it all out. There's Donors Club. There's no doubt. We can talk about life and love and dreams, even the darkest, deepest themes. Nothing's off limits at this spot. So come on in. Let's get high and high. Stoners Club. Oh, what a place where you can, be, you can be yourself and show your face. Just smoke and chat and let it all out. At the Stoners Club, there's no doubt. So come on down and join the crowd at the Stoners Club. We'll show you how to relax and unwind and just be free at the Stoners Club. You'll see. That's pretty good, man. I mean, I asked him to do a rap about Big Joe helping a kid who pooped his pants. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm to do that. Yo, this is- Fucking world premiere of the hit song "Changing Diapers." Hit him with it, Kyle. <laughs> from I want to ask, I want to, I want to ask it to do it again. I need to, I need to, uh, from, I need to refine it a little bit. It's not ready. Now, can you say ready. in the style of like Aesop Rock or in the style of KRS? Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it'll totally do that shit. Yeah, like yeah. So let's, let, yeah, let's fuck around. Hold on, I'm, I'm making a soup of the microwave. Oh, somebody else, somebody idea. else, somebody else, take it. Yeah, do do a. Yeah, let's get funky with it. Let's see who who is an artist and time present. Okay, we should come up with a thing. We should come up with a person, a place, yeah, yeah. an adjective. Yeah, this is Mad Libs. This is Chad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody Chad gets one. Everybody does a person. Somebody does the person. Somebody does the place. Somebody does the adjective. Somebody does. Uh, they're holding a noun. <laughs> Yo, Quasar just wants to know why you motherfuckers ain't fucking voting on the Drip Drops website for the Cardano Circle. Like, oh. How many votes do we have? I Not seen, enough. I haven't seen it. Nine, nine, oh, nine, oh, seven, nine, oh, we four. We're good, man. I mean, it's pretty sexy. Past a thousand. Wow. Past a thousand. We got to get. Well, no, our goal is a G. I mean, they were, the last one only had like a hundred something. Well, that's because Big Joe wouldn't let us use the Stormers Club to, to host the Zoom meeting. Yep. Totally. Sorry about that, but I'm on board now. You know, just let bygones be bygones. Um, let it go. <laughs> <laughs> Come vote on the circle at Stormers Club. God, that pissed people off. Okay, Kazar, so do you want to name the person, the place, the adjective, or uh, the noun he's holding? And um, 
and his. Was actresses. this the person? Was yeah. this the person that Patrick was talking about? Mm-mm. We're doing Chat B G G G P. We're doing a rap. Oh. And you gotta sing it. Okay, let's do it. Yo, okay, you're still hearing people. Char- Charles Mandeville. Okay, Kazar is the person. <laughs> Kazar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I'm on the front side and the back side uh, and chat API. Okay, so the adjective is Kazar oh, on damn, the back I gotta side. I the fucking mute. No wonder they do this on Cardano over coffee on Kazar. Yo, check it out. Fucking before the music, I want to play some other music, but I actually don't want to play it. A fucking ninja does. A ninja wants to play music, so fucking... I want to hear it for like a minute at least and get in the groove. And then um, I want to hear this fucking poem. It better not be weird. What the fuck? I'm changing diapers. What the, what the fuck is going on? This is what we're doing? No, 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 no. I want to redo that. That's still in the studio. Oh, okay, man. okay. That's, was... to come. That's coming soon. Okay, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that, yeah, that one's coming soon. It's not diapers, man. You helped a kid on the street. You made him feel good, Okay, man. okay. You, you Kyle. Good. This is a dope rap. It's like Big Joe helping the kids be shit himself. Yo, second thing. Usually hearing people fucking chew fucking in the background on their food grosses me the fuck out. But not in this case. In this case, it's getting me fucking hungry. Um, And I'm fucking... I gotta go warm up some food now, so... Yo, Ninja, hit him with that fucking, you know what I mean? Hit him with that bass. <laughs> Yo, this is live in the studio in Florida. <laughs> what, Joe? I said this is live in the studio from Florida. <laughs> yeah, it's a studio. Freestyle battle. You couldn't see my shadow. Uh, <laughs> treat you like my cattle. In rap, I dabble. You want me to turn it off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, these fools don't want to battle me right now. Quasar, Cupac don't want it. You know what I mean? The Quasinator does not want that smoke. And uh, I think tomorrow or the next day, I'm going to be whooping ass in the 8 out fucking uh, Discord as well. They're having some Get other Get the fuck out of here. You've canceled twice already. And I gave you a, a thousand pot lead. <laughs> Yo, I thought... I thought uh, what are you talking about, man? There's one going down in a few days in the 8 out Discord. There's a fucking Jeopardy game going down. And the topics are all Cardano related, so Jeopardy. Yeah, Jeopardy. Give mm. me fucking profile pictures for five hundred, Bob. And then you know what I mean? There's three dudes and they gotta fucking smash the buzzard and try to get the answer right. What kind of questions are they? All Cardano related, DeFi, fucking NFTs, fucking community, fucking personalities and shit. All kinds of weird shit. It's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. I've won like one or two of them. I forget. Um, There better not be one about the circle election. God dang it. Uh, Darlington. Who is Darlington? Who is Darlington? <laughs> <laughs> <Why though? laughs> Darlington's cool, man. He's solid. I haven't voted yet, but I'm going to vote for him. I voted oh. for him twice. How much time we got left to vote? Quasar, we got like... One we got until Friday afternoon. 
Okay, this week is the last week to get the word out. Yeah, but we're almost out of Discoin. The first Did thousand people to vote get seven, uh, five thousand seven. No, five hundred and seventy-seven. Yo, I'm gonna, I want five thousand, or I'm gonna call you a rug pull. I got it recorded right here. You accidentally said it, so I legally I could hold you liable now. We'll Yo, it's this discuss liars. All we do is lie. We did we digins. We just make up stories. So. Yo, Quasar, did you watch the hearings today, the FTX hearings? No, man, I don't get tied up in that bullshit. That's just too much. Nice. You are, you ain't even got to hear the bullshit to know it's already bullshit. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's bullshit. God. Everybody on Twitter. Y'all messing up my governance. That's all I got to say. I'm pissed off about it. How's that? Now everybody talking about FTX instead of these 30 badass candidates we got running for circle. I don't know, man. Charles was... Y'all hear Charles? I mean, he, he, he made a comment that you know they tried and failed, tried and failed, tried and failed. And now they're looking at the NBO, so I don't know what the future's going to look like. Man, no, it's it, it's it's going to look like it did a year ago. The future. I don't know, man. <clears throat> he was saying that it that kind of and, and correct me if I was wrong. This was last night. You guys were there. Um, hold on, let me get my thoughts. He was saying that uh, that the you know one of the purposes of Catalyst is to train up you know a group of people to help participate in decentralized government governance and they did that and you know and so now, now the focus is going to be on the MBO I think and the catalyst will exist but I think it'll be drastically different I don't know how it's going to change but it'll change it will, it'll, yeah front end, yeah yeah front the last one that's going to be ran all all flea markety Right. Well, but now keep in mind, uh, keep keep in mind, like you, we, we, y'all, all of us, they, them, all of us <laughs> are, are creating this motherfucking shit that can be carried forward to become these power structures that exist, you know. And that's that's why you want to participate. I mean, like you want to be part of it. We are the people that speak to each other. We are the people that own this sh- shit. And we are, you know, along with, I mean, there's lots of little subgroups like this, you know, um, and and so like, you know, we need we need to get up in there, and and they're giving away free shit. Fucking go get the free shit. What the fuck? Man, there's already too many people got up in in there and and got out or or put, uh, you know, space balls. That movie when they put that big vacuum on top of the atmosphere and suck everything up. Your sky is as big as mine. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what a fucking catalyst feels like sometimes. Like, oh, where does where did everybody go? Um, you know, I think there's uh I think they'll try to have part of uh fund eleven. At least that's what Jack um from IOG said. Parts of Fund Eleven going through the CIP going through that process. I don't know how much. And then I remember Charles saying that the treasury could either fund the MBO or part of catalyst would be fund the MBO. Either way, it's, it's going to, it's got to be funded. It can't be not funded. There's got, and that means there's going to be employees and, It'll be, I mean, it's going to be interesting. I think it comes with a jacket, too. A bomber jacket? Oh, he said they're going to. Like a raincoat? They're going to start participating, too. So, yeah. And that was the idea all along. 
<laughs> they're like, they're like, hey, if Turbo gets funded, shit, we might as well put a proposal in too. No, no, no. It was, always, it was always about them. I mean, and this isn't bad, but anything, but you know, that was always the idea is that they would continue to build because you know they had a contract and they're getting paid. And they can't build for free, <laughs> you know. So if they're going to keep building stuff, they should get paid. So that's 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 perfectly fine. Any. But they're gonna they're gonna trim the fat, heavy. So, so what happened? I know that there was a time where there was um uh they, they wanted to renew a contract to twenty twenty five. I believe that was renewed and signed, but but I don't remember, Kyle. Uh, does that ring a bell to you? Yeah, I'm uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. I think they went over. I think Volterra was supposed to be. And there I don't know. I don't know the details, so um, but I know that Charles has spent a lot of his own money. Um because the CF hasn't spent a lot of money and I've seen him complain many, many times about it. I've seen friction there, but I can't comment on the contract or anything like that. But I know I already gone up, you know, had to spend more than they've been paid on. on Man, I can't hear a word you're saying. I I think you're, I hear a chip bag and I hear like something munching on something is all I'm hearing right (laughs) now. I mean, a popsicle, man. I mean, a popsicle. He's he's got one of those frozen pizzas. I'm trying to be the All right. Yeah. No, I can't. I don't, I don't know about the contract, but I know that IOG spent more. Then they've been paid, so it's that's commendable. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, and I still don't understand what game CF playing playing this handout uh, of the game. Yeah. Went from bicameral to tricameral to MBO. Dude, have you ever seen a consulting company run like a big, huge consult? I mean, I mean, not like. Isn't the dude that runs that like a like from like Deloitte or some shit? Mm-hmm. It's a very strange place how it's run. Like it gets some oh, man. stuff done, but it's just a very odd organizational structure to like. Would you call it anarchical? Would you call yeah. it anarchical where there are bubbles of different uh, activity? <laughs> no, no. I mean, well, I don't. I don't like that. I don't think bubbles are different. I mean, there's. I mean, it's, that, it's a big organization, so there's obviously bubbles of different activities. But anyway, it's just like um, I don't know. It's a very. It's it seems very corporatey, right? So and it's just a you get corporatey kind of speed and decision making. I don't know, man. I think they want to take the IOG decision making development slow and steady. I mean, but, well, but they're hiring people too, so they got something going on. It feels like it'd be more active. You know what I mean? Like that's that's sort of the thing. Like it's supposed to be active, like generating activity. You now, yeah, it, it's oh man, <laughs> they they were active at the summit. Yeah, very corporate. What what were the main topics of the summit? Um, I wasn't actually able to log in to the summit on my why, computer. Why is Charles like, in Scotland? <laughs> What's the Scott Fest going on? Like, I, I don't know, man. It, it seemed like I'm telling Scott you, Fest friction. What's yeah, crazy dude, is that was, I wasn't was able hard. to watch the that Scott was, Fest. <laughs> that was cog blocking all the way. Like, yeah, oh, you're doing a summit? Guess what? We're going to announce. We're going to throw midnight. We're going to put some dust up in the air. No, but he swung through the Cardano summit afterwards, but he totally did do. They, they did have their something going on and and he's i i, I think uh is he working i think he may be working are there universities over there so mm-hmm. I, I don't know he's got stuff going on over there so yeah fine. there's yeah they have a partnership with the university there and and uh you know that's iohk and they're a software development company that's what they are he's the ceo of that company that's so that is a different interest than like 
you know, open source world changing fucking product development that you do through a foundation and da, 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 da. now the fact that IOHK and, and the CF are having some kind of fucking rub right now is really it seems weird to me that they need to figure out their organizational fucking standards at that fucking level. Uh, but but uh, keep in mind, they have to have a rub because that's what illustrates that the shit is decentralized. We don't like each other. We need drama, right? We need to have yeah, some. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we need to have some barrier between us. <laughs> you know, we can't all be all buddy buddy. Or you know, they're gonna see that you know, uh, you know, whoever's looking, they, we, them, uh, us, whatever, whoever. Um, you know, they're, we're all looking. We can see, you know, so we, you know, we're, we're all paying attention and there's other, the other entities are paying attention, the aliens and fucking everybody else that's been mentioned tonight. Um, you know, the poets and the prophets and the fucking thieves are all paying attention. Um, and so, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so some of the shit is drama, you know, whatever, like, uh, you know, uh, but, but it's crazy how drama works. It's like, yeah, uh, nudes, nudes. And like, you know, we can, we can fire up the topic. We can ask you, Kyle, uh, you know, and then you bring in the dev and then we discover that like, oh shit, people can sell their vote, you know? And, and then that, that generated a whole, like, I imagine who knows how many people saw that shit <laughs> because whatever, you know, and it's like it is. It's neither here nor there. Uh, you know, I'm about the selling the the vote thing. Uh, but it was a topic, and it was inflammatory, and people were eating it up, and everybody loved it, and whatever. You know, like everybody had an opinion about it. You know, um, so it's like you kind of need the little rub. You need the rub. So I'm gonna shut up. But that's that was kind of my take on like what's going down. The difference uh, is like everybody was humming and getting shit done. Yeah, we definitely need to get some shit done. Like, you know, lots of things can be done differently. I, I do agree with that. I mean, there's a lot of shit. Go, Kyle. We got to do a gap analysis. We got to sit down, get a really good hard look at what IOG's doing and what gaps are. I mean, like, Hydra's cool. And, you know, I know Pie from Sunday Swap helped make Hydra better, you know? And so, like, and by better, I mean serve more applications. And that's really what it's about. I mean, what, what budget would be required to perform the gap analysis that you keep talking about? The study, right? Like, we need to figure out where our weaknesses are. and where, like, uh, I don't I mean, think it would take much. It's just priorities. It's just getting the right smart people together in the room. We talk about it. We write it down. And we look at it. And we say, okay. Like right now, we've got technical gaps of things that need to come before we can scale. So, you know, side chains, they're coming. And, you know, there's interesting implementations of side chains, but we just have to get all these technologies in place to scale. And then, so side chains are one way. And then you've got potentially, you know, custom L2s, which is different. And so, And then you I mean, you could have you could have L ones dry hump and L ones. You know, I mean, it, we could have all kinds of amazing things. Well, yeah, but I think, you kind of <laughs> think about UX, right? So, how does that look like if a user's traversing from across the layers? That needs to be obfuscated to the user. He shouldn't even know what layer. You know, he shouldn't even see any of that. So how, so how do you manage that? And then, you know, you've got to, because you can't get millions of users on an L1. I mean, you can, but, you know, concurrent. You know, everyone's going to be operating on the side chains. I was I was just being inflammatory and belligerent, man. You don't have to, I'm not, I wasn't making a real argument. I'm sorry. I'm not even. I'm just. I'm just. I'm. I'm I didn't mean. I didn't mean to derail you because you're. You're on the right track. Yes, we. We have. I mean, uh, I say we. I don't develop anything. <laughs> I don't know why I always include myself. 
I don't develop. Well, I do. I do fucking golden fucking nipples. And you know what we need to get? We need a GitHub. Oh, man. I mean, that's all Catalyst Funds, dude. Get books. If you got a Get Book, we're giving you 40 grand. So you get your hub and get your book. Ain't got to develop it. Just make it look pretty. And um, if you're into the Telegram, I pinned a tweet at the top and put it in the comments. Um, a, a team in Ethiopia built a, a Telegram native wallet. That's pretty pretty sexy. It's still on testnet, but man, it was a good call. That's one of your candidates for the circle. Um, I I signed back up for Telegram today. You're a Telegrammer now. I'm I'm about to just go all in on Telegram, and I I hate it. I hate it. I I don't like the Catalyst Telegrams. I can tell you that. Um, but man, that that wallet, even though it's testnet, and and there was some delays, the onboarding, and just using it, man, it's beautiful. That's how you. That's how you onboard fucking millions of people. Throw it and in the Telegram, Telegram or WhatsApp. That's Telegram is completely private, right? It's uh, it's encrypted end to end, right? Doesn't matter. It matters, yes, and yes, they'll say that. But flaws happen. There's always something. Nothing's perfect. Oh, uh, maybe I was thinking about Signal. I was thinking Signal. I'm sorry. No, nah, Signal's what fucking. For FTX dudes were using. Was it really? I mean, that's what uh, that's what they said today in the fucking shit show. So what all did he get charged with? And I, th- I think I read something on the internet where he had a Telegram channel with his tight buddies that was called Wire Fraud. It was is that legit? I don't know. I didn't fact check that. Yeah, that was like the name of their, their whatever. That was the name of their internal chat group. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dumbass. Fucking <laughs> hey, Oh my god. Uh, we can't talk about so, I, hey, hey, I got guys, a question. I, I, I got a question, I but go. it might. Oh, all right. Oh, if you got a question, yeah, I gotta go. Yeah, it, it was actually for you, Kyle. Sorry, <laughs> but well, I want to keep you. I don't. <laughs> yeah, go go ahead. I gotta help my dog though. I mean, come on. No, you're 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 good. I could always ask later. Um, it was pretty much just about a, a doja and like. Uh, oh, that dog is in pain. Let I let know, him I have. Gotta, I gotta put her down now. <laughs> oh, baby. Hey, babe. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Where you want to go? Where you trying to go? Mm. Where you trying to go? There you go. Come on. Come on. Somebody timestamp that and record it. I'm going to play that every night right before bed. Uh, this is way too intimate, Kyle. Everybody's listening intently as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, kill the dog already. Right. Damn. I'm just hoping the oh. dog's okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. I'm not. That was terrible and a bad taste. I'm sorry. Yeah. She can't. Yeah, she can't walk. She got tumors. I'm sorry, man. I I I understand, man. It sucks. I'm I'm sorry. Okay. You had a question? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, was I wanted actually... to bust your balls about the problems of fucking of Earth, fucking Kyle. I I wanted to give you all the shit of all the fucking. <laughs> no, I was telling somebody about the. Uh, all right, uh, my bad. Ghost, I uh, gave golden uh, nipples uh, a fucking break. He was getting on my nerves. Um, go ahead, one trippy bunny. No, I was, saying, I was telling somebody about the Adosia or those I don't know how you pronounce it, but the uh, the plat that platform for three D printing, and um, I, I find it interesting because like it, what it could do for like uh, decentralizing manufacturing and stuff like that, like coming from like a warehouse work type of environment. 
but um, they they didn't see the need for a coin or a token, and I and I'm still like unsure as to why uh, the token exists or how it would be used. And I was just wondering if you could like maybe elaborate on that. Yeah, sure. So the tokenomics is something we're kind of working out, and ultimately there's got to be a governance aspect to it. And this particular token has got an open policy, so there'll be a kind of swap at some point. But, um, you know, when you look at, like, dealing with, with decentralized aspects, so first of all, it's a it's the front end's centralized and the back end's going to be decentralized. And that means, you know, anybody can come and build their own front end on the back end. And, you know, ultimately, and that's the goal, you know, when the marketplace goes to production. And so, though, as you move to decentralize the front end, you have very interesting problems. Um, and, you, and, and because you're dealing with counterparts where we really, you know, as managing the front end, you know, like the system has to handle bad actors, you know. So if you've got somebody cheating somebody, either a buyer or a seller, you know, at some point, like on eBay, you have a human that interacts and in a decentralized world, that's somebody's job, you know, and it's like, it has to be a human. And so how do you do that? So you need a treasury. So you need to take a portion of revenue that's, you know, for, from, from the ecosystem out of the sales and, and put it into some bucket. Then you have to have a way to manage that treasury. And so um, tokens definitely necessary on that front. And then when you get into the actual utility part of it, there's a lot of cool things you can do with it um, within the platform, as well as, for incentives around utilization of the platform, you can send advice. Um, uh, you tie in kind of discounts or consumption points, sinks within within the platform, and then what that does is it, is, is it creates demand for users to kind of and all participants of the platform to um, you know kind of further engage with the platform, and it's just a tool for not only drawing in new users, because if you do your tokenomics right, you can do an incentives phase that, that pulls in users. We all know that, but it's like, okay, what does it mean? So that part of it's more like a utility component. So the existing open policy makes more sense like that. That's not necessarily meant to be this huge, and like, it's not to meant to be an, an investment vehicle. Does that make sense? No, that, that makes perfect sense, and I, I appreciate you, uh, you touching up on it like that. Um, and I can see, see how it could be used in, like, solving, like, disputes and governance and, and that part. Um, oh, uh, one more thing I wanted to know, like, like um, from some, if somebody is, like, starting off from, you know, bare bones, doesn't know anything about 3D printing, um, like, or, or, the, or the projects, like, what's the best way to kind of start to get involved um, we, yeah, we've got a Discord. Just hop on in. Um, we've got a lot of dudes, all ranging skills, and we've had uh, many, many people show up who have, you know, no prior experience who are just rocking it, kicking ass, doing stuff. So, um, I guess just get here. And, uh, let me let me make sure I'm following everybody in here. Oh, yeah, I, I appreciate that. I'll, I'll definitely jump in and, and ask some more questions. Yeah, yeah, Simi, I just got home tonight, and I got some personal shit to handle, so if I don't respond right away, but I'll get you the link. Uh, soon. I'm, hold on, I'm following everybody. I think I got everybody. And I'm still going, guys. Yeah, I just seen a, a documentary on 3D printing guns and like uh, it kind of helped me open my eyes. To, I mean, people think that, you know, it's it's so easy to just print up a gun. But like uh, when you get into like the efficiency part of how good that gun is, it's not like a gun you would think. <laughs> so like it was just, just kind of funny. We're still a long way from being able to print perfect guns that shoot thousands of you know, times before they before they lock or anything like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's wild, man. You know, the things that people can manufacture. And, you know, the, uh, that, uh, the, the cool thing about a doge is that even the, the designers are going to get compensated too, right? So there's a, a portion of that. So you make, you guys make a design, you list it in the marketplace. It's not like you're selling an NFT. You're basically 
putting a a piece of IP out there that um, you know is within a system that you know you, the files will still be kind of stored public if someone really knows what they're doing. But what you're enabling is a layman access to be able to hire a you know basically kind of like an Uber driver, a 3D printer to pick up jobs like an Uber driver so they can have good ship to them. So like, uh, you know, if you needed a part for some old school vacuum cleaner or some, you know, just whatever the hell you could find on this store that somebody decided to make, you know, you could go and buy it and then someone out in the world could say, Oh, okay. Maybe, you know, give you a, give basically bid on it and you guys come to an agreement and it's all smart contract based and, essentially just yeah. have something manufactured and that you couldn't get anywhere else in the world. And then the person who designed it has a residual income. If it's, if whatever they do is good and popular and useful. So. Yeah. The, the, the first thing I thought of when, when, with the whole like localizing uh, manufacturing is it could be used for a lot of MVP stuff or like concept, like uh, just simple models that people locally might want to just, you know, experiment with. And I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, I hear you. All right. Well, hey, yeah, I do have to run now, but I appreciate it. Appreciate you. All right. Bye. We're gonna give we're gonna give Golden Nipples the second chance. See if you fucking calm down. <laughs> you go rush, dude. You were good to the I'm, end. The end really sealed the deal. I'm, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I, I didn't. I didn't really have a point. Uh, you know, the dog got me worked up and everything. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everybody. You're good. Okay. You're All good. Right. <laughs> uh, but I do love Adosia, and I do have some Adosia tokens. And so, uh, thank you for asking that question uh, because that's all information that I wanted to know too. I'm like, what am I supposed to do with these things? Like, I have them. And I love the I love the thought and of like how it's going to transform the world. Uh, so yeah, thank you for asking that question. Uh, Does anybody we're else gonna have? To, we're going oh, to go pivot to something more uplifting. The dog got me so sad. If my if my battery dies, uh, just I'm gonna let oh, give you guys a warning right now. Uplifting. There's, there's more sadness, dude. <laughs> My battery died on you guys last night, and I was just like, oh, man. It's, it's like at 8% right now. <laughs> that isn't uplifting. What's more uplifting? Let's, we need something uplifting. You're right. Is, I still got 8% of my battery to spend with you guys. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Glass, glass half full. I just <laughs> dropped my ice cream on the floor. It was oh, <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. What you, no, what you meant? What you, <laughs> what you meant was I just dropped my ice cream on the floor, and that means I'm gonna get some more. Oh. No, I started. I started a business. I'm starting a business. Um, What's the business? A meal prep business. Healthy foods oh, and those microwavable like things. Fucking, I started with a few family members. Uh, five plates, 60 bucks, $12 a plate. Takes care of you all week, Monday through Friday, for your lunches during the work week. Um, and it, it's a pretty, it's a pretty good deal. They're liking the food baked chicken and shrimp fajitas and a lot of vegetables. Big Joe style, dude. Yeah, I I guess. big Joe style. Get some, it'd be great. We got our own food brand. Uh, do you get, do you slip like some buds in there? Like, do we get a do we get like a you know a little something something? <laughs> Shit. No, Yo, you not, should make a hot yet. sauce, big Joe style hot sauce. Yo, hot sauce is I like hot sauce. Yo, big Joe style hot sauce. You got the big Joe style? Yeah. Why not? Why not food? Yeah, I love food. I'm always cooking and everything. Why not food? That's the brand. Why not food? That's the division, dude. Damn. You know, I gotta start working on on uh hot sauce why? recipes. Yeah. Yeah. You you just founded the why not food division. Congratulations, you're the division head. Or the top chef, as we like to call it at Why Not Industries. Nudes is gonna be so excited. It's gonna have to have a touch of lime. 
Oh, Just, you know uh, what? Newt's has got to be the division league. Good, good thinking. You, you're smart. You. You know what? You get division lead the first day, and you just know exactly what to do with it. <laughs> Pass it off. Great idea, Big Joe. You got a promotion. This kid's going to go far. This is how FTX started. <laughs> this is how... Okay, and for everyone else who's wondering, why not? If you've heard of that, I think most of you at least have probably heard of it at some point. Uh, it's the beginning of Why Not Industries. So I'm not sure what we're making, but it's all the things we want to make because why not? If any of you want to start a division, our office doors are open. You you know it's official because we have the Ada handle. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why not? So if there isn't any other uh, pressing matters, I think that was a good stoners club. What did we do? Fucking four or five hours, whatever it is. Had some good conversations. Uh, fucking golden titties had a chance to be an asshole for a little bit, but we took care of it. Nobody's feelings were too hurt. I hope not. What a dick. Um, you know what? You know what? <laughs> yeah. What? Go vote, motherfucker. Go That's vote. Right. That's right. You vote. Smart Catalyst man. circle, you're right. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, but everyone, um, I wish you guys all a fucking good night. Get some fucking rest. So early in the week, it's going to be Tuesday or Wednesday. I don't even know. I smoke a lot of weed, but I know it's early in the week. Um, I'm going to go make some more fucking videos and go viral. Uh, we had Maxine Waters all pissed off today. She's getting thousands of views on TikTok and fucking YouTube. It's awesome. I'm going to chop up some of the space today and throw that on YouTube with some cool visuals. I'm going to start doing that. So, Oh, um, shit. Oh, shit. You didn't tell me. Oh, no. It says recording. Damn it. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, now everyone's going to know. <laughs> but yo you know you're a troll what are you, what are you gonna do I can't what's the story about the fucking scorpion that bites the dude that tried to save him is like yo I'm a scorpion you know <laughs> yeah why'd you do that he's like he's a fucking scorpion it's what I fucking do yeah like what do you <laughs> yeah the same shit happened the other morning with Al some, some, uh, whose face was it? I don't know if it's Comdano or it was the dolphin space or some shit. And some, some chick was trying to come on, uh, the space and learn about Cardano. And Al was like, said something like, fuck you or some shit. <laughs> and fucking nudes tweeted something like trying to onboard people and trying to onboard thousands of people into Cardano. And the guy's on a bike with a stick, and then he puts a stick in the wheel, and then he crashes, and he's like, damn, how come people ain't coming over to Cardano? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Anyways, uh, I'm tired. Uh, I got a meal I'm in the middle of right now. I'm going to enjoy that, watch some YouTube. Um, but, yeah, we'll have another... Random Stoners Club uh, pretty soon here. Maybe another one this week. Thursday, Friday, we'll figure it out. Um, but you guys have a good productive week. I wish you guys the best. Positive energy. I hope everyone has a good week. And have a good night. <laughs>